I'm gonna use this first episode. We live, by the way. I'm gonna use this first episode, and at some point, you gonna say really indie though, and I'm just gonna clip that up, and that's okay. gonna be that's okay, gonna be yeah. something on here. Okay, cool. Hell yeah. But ladies and gentlemen, oh my goodness, welcome, 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 welcome. You're listening to the beginning of something special. I'm calling it right now. Yeah. You ain't got no choice. You ain't got no choice. The industry has 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 made this happen. Yes. Hey, thank you, God forsaken industry. Yes. <laughs> Finally here. We talked about it. Yeah. We talked about it. I, I, it's crazy. We had a show. Uh, or you had a show, and I came yeah. out to go support the show just yeah, in yeah. general. And uh, actually, when you left here with TF last yeah, time, yeah, 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 you was like, I, I'm, I had to hit you me off to yeah, the side. You was yeah, like, look, Kurt, right. bro. Uh, we, let's make, let's pull the trigger on it. He's like, I wasn't playing when I said that. No, straight up, I was dead serious. And then somebody in there also. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what's up, calligraphy popped in here right now. Uh, what up? Yeah, he was. Uh, you said that. You know, er, look. I, it's not that I don't think that you you telling the truth. Cause yeah. I know that whenever you say something, yeah. it's the truth. First of all, welcome Triz here. Yeah, I'm here, y'all. He's here. But you know, we just we're in an industry that's used to. Yeah. That's used to like yeah, all right, yeah, fake handshakes and daps. Should be dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all you real. know what? Yo, yeah. you and I together. Yeah. We'll take over the world. Yeah. I just don't know when. <laughs> and nobody ever wants to admit that they have no plans on yeah. seeing that through. But uh, with that said, man, I, I really do appreciate the fact that I I appreciate the fact that you and I have been building on another level, even beyond what we already know For sure. from one another. Yeah, yeah. But what I love is the fact that every time you come here, you're given a perspective of independence that yep. We have these conversations all the time, mm-hmm. and so there's things that I'm like, yeah, that's that comes with the, that comes with the territory. But there's yeah. some folks out here I think that are experiencing it for the first time yeah. through the eyes of someone who is doing this full time. Yeah, where obviously I do the content creation mm-hmm. and, and these different things. Uh, I'm still an independent artist, yeah. but it dawned on me the more I started to see the feedback in the streams that we did, yeah. how needed the perspective was. For sure, hell yeah, we give a lot of game too. I feel like, yeah. you know what I mean, it's a lot of things that people learn. That they take away from whenever we get on camera together, and I feel like you know, I mean, it's some shit that people need to know that's getting into what we doing. Whether it be, you know, music, anything independent, shit, right. you could be selling paintings, man. It all applies to being independent and selling your own product. For sure, Straight for up. sure, and and it's something that I love the fact that you're actively doing this. Yeah, Th- that makes the conversations already validated, mm-hmm. and it's crazy, bro. We were talking about this before. How many? I don't even want to call them arguments. I just mm-hmm. I like to call them corrections. Yeah, yeah. I end yeah, up yeah. having to make. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, you know, I had Paul Stewart in here yesterday and I was talking to him mm-hmm. about just uh the industry at whole at this point in time. And obviously I've been doing reaction videos and just seeing these different points of views and I realized, damn, how many folks that I don't want to say I looked up to, but at yeah. one point in time I at least respected their output or yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. lost. Straight up. How many self-proclaimed experts out mm-hmm. here who have never made a song? No, nah, straight up. For never sure. Never made a beat, never have done any of this. But and, got uh, so many opinions. Got so many opinions <laughs> and, and what looks to what looks to be like a fan base on the mm-hmm. other end. So I want to establish some things before we get into the first topics, first yeah. and foremost. Uh, in this podcast, and I haven't even told you this, Tristan, in this mm-hmm. podcast, I'm not looking to censor nothing. Me neither. Yeah. You wouldn't have done this had I yeah. said, oh, <laughs> yeah. you're too bad, Riverdoo. Yeah. Please don't do that. I no. obviously don't want to get my channel demoted no, or, or, or demonetized, no. but um, anybody that is in here, mm-hmm. I know that there's a lot of content that feels like it is it is for the broader audience. Mm-hmm. But one thing that he, I'm not going to allow him to do is drive down here because I'm a distance from where you stay at yeah. uh, bi-weekly and feel like you have to sugarcoat any of it. Yeah, and even if it means sharing viewpoints that the majority of people may, may not agree with, I'm yeah. glad that it's your viewpoint to yeah, share. For sure, and we're not gonna bullshit that. So I, yeah. I just want to make sure that you know, mm-hmm. as much as I've tried to make it a safe space for everybody that's mm-hmm. around here, uh, you need to. I want you to understand, yeah. like, yeah, this is my channel, and eventually we're gonna take this to a, its own channel. But yeah. uh, nah, bro, this is the really indie podcast. For sure, and yeah. I want, and I, I also. Like I want to be real with the audience because I want them to know how authentic it is. You feel me? Yeah. I'm not here to sugarcoat nothing. I'm going to let you know the real. I may say some things that you may not <laughs> agree with, but it is the truth. It's always going to be the truth, and that's the truth, so help me God. <laughs> do, do you, and I, my, my question is, would you rather like us for the lie yeah. or hate us for the truth? Yeah, on the real, yeah. A lot of this, a lot of this medicine is going to be hard to swallow. It, yeah, because there's going to be some very difficult conversations that I think yeah. that you guys – 
and and you know what? And I was talking to Triz at at at, uh, at his show about this. I was like, yeah. it may even be some political conversations. Yeah, <laughs> that, that that may have y'all on some on the fence about whether or not you want to support me or Triz. But the truth yeah. is the truth, and the truth is the truth. And I'm glad that I have a platform yeah. for us to speak on these kind of things. But yeah. uh, Triz, I know you've come on this channel many different times, but could mm -hmm. you kind of give the people a, a, a reintroduction to who you are, and then also I have a very specific question to start this off. Okay, how do you define independence? Okay, well, while you're doing that, I'm about to share this to the to the, to the, to the Twitter. Go ahead. Okay, bet. <laughs> Well, uh, for those that don't know, just now tapping in, my name is Triz. Uh, I'm an independent hip hop artist. I've been doing it successfully for like the last 10, 12 years. Fresh out of high school, I've always been, you know, putting out my own music. Um, I've been putting out music online since 2006, roughly, mm -hmm. like around the MySpace area. And I was like uploading my shit to DatPiff, you know what I mean? So I got like a lot of experience with promoting and putting out my own product. Um, yeah, and I've seen like a lot of success since I got out, out of high school. Pressing them on merch, pressing them on t-shirts, um, going to go do shows in and out of California. Even when there was only one or two people in the crowd, like I still rocked it. Like every time, you know what I mean. Like I've been through the ups and the downs, being an independent artist, and I'm still going through it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm still trooping through it. You know what I mean? It's not always, you know, peachy king. You know what I mean? I'm going through some shit right now, but you know what I mean? I've always managed to keep going, and I think that is like the value of being independent is, you know, knowing that. Nobody's gonna hold your hand through this shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what independent is. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I had a lot of help. You know what I mean? I had a lot of people behind me. We all um, do, for sure. When I first got to the IE is when I uh give give them yeah. we, we we talking like they yeah. know what the IE some of them, uh, some of these folks yeah. on the East Coast and they're like the Inland Empire. <laughs> <laughs> the Inland Empire is like 35, 40 minutes east of Los Angeles. So when I moved from LA, I moved to the IE. Um Around like 2002 is when I got out here. But when I started to like get into the scene, I was fresh out of high school. Yeah. So 2010 is when I bumped into you mm -hmm. and bumped into Noah at the Vibe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hell yeah, 13 you for years ago. 13 years? Yep, going on 14. So That's a 13 year old right now discovering uh, things. They change, their voice changing <laughs> based upon how long you and I known each other. That's wild. Yeah, no. Nah. So yeah. like coming out here, I started to like really value being independent because it was like being around y'all mm -hmm. and seeing how Noah had this this like um this thing with the vibe and like bringing artists out and coming to actually perform yeah you know what i'm saying and actually you know develop some sort of fan base you know what i'm saying do you think it was something different about the region because i definitely want to go in about yeah. this do you think it was something different about the region that you came to mm -hmm. that kind of promoted independence in a different way or made you, maybe made you look at independence differently than how you did before uh yeah really because like um as big as the IE is the music the hip hop community is really tight knit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like we all became fans of each other before we got like fan bases, if you Facts. think about it. You know what I'm saying? Like Facts. a lot of people that was in the room at the vibe that was in the crowd were, you know, creators too. Mm -hmm. Whether they be producers, DJs, rappers, whatever. Yeah. So there was yeah. a whole lot of networking and shit going on. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like that's how I, I feel like I got a lot of like my fan base. A lot of my fans were friends first. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like that's what changed my perspective on it because it was like, damn, we already, the IE is already so overlooked. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we really don't have no choice but to troop it out and, like, do it ourselves. And, Man. You know, having a place like The Vibe to go right. perform and showcase our music live. So, like, that, my whole perspective on being independent really changed around, like, 2010. Like, I'm like, okay, damn. This is, this is a product that we could, like, really go far with, you know? And, and I'll tell you, you know, I was obviously... My origin story starts in Carson yeah. and kind of moved around Carson, moved to Long Beach, moved to Downey for a second. Yeah. Uh, but when I lived out there, the idea of independence mm -hmm. sounded appealing. Yeah. But only because I think there was like a lot of underground hip hop fans out there. Yeah. And so they would kind of mention names like the label Anticon or they would mm -hmm. mention Idea. They would mention all these artists that uh, living legends mm -hmm. at the time that I was like, is this possible? Mm -hmm. How are they living? Because we don't have social media at the time that I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm in high school, we're talking about. Yeah. But the idea, I remember there was a kid that came up to me, <laughs> most <laughs> underground name of all time, this nigga's name was Hyperbole. <laughs> Super underground. Hyperbole. Yeah. <laughs> the fourth and the third eye, yeah, third, fourth. Right. He was going crazy, but Hyperbole told me, he was like, man, he was like, would you still look at your rap career as a failure if you had that house on the hills and you was able to live off your music? And yeah. I'm like, he, he gave me that idea and I was like, 
I wouldn't be mad at that. Even yeah. at a young age, I, yeah. I had this thought to me like, damn, house in the hills means that at that time meant like you're living pretty good. Yeah. You're able to take care of yourself. It may not necessarily be the the crazy square foot mansion, but mm-hmm. if that's something about independence, I'm interested. Mm-hmm. Only issue was that I felt like the scenes that I was in or the scenes I was getting my shows at weren't necessarily independent shows it was folks mm-hmm. who were up and coming mm-hmm. who were trying to get signed right my first show was me trying to get yeah. performing in front of a and r's you yeah, know that whole yeah, fucking yeah. pay to play shit at the key yeah, club yeah been there <laughs> bro but not till i moved out to the ie did i really see something tangible and it wasn't just in the uh the recording artist bro this mm-hmm. shit was also in the clothing brands yeah, yeah. like shout out to rick bbi shout mm-hmm. out to uh, rest in peace to uh, uh, Fats and and yeah. and uh twenty four seven Habiliments Clothing. Yeah. I'm looking at these brands, GOK Clothing, building yeah. up their own shit. Yeah. Like they're di- they're just as DIY, DIY as us recording yeah. out the house. They're mm. making stuff out the house. Yeah, something around being something about being around this culture, even like the yeah. spoken word scene with Judah One and mm-hmm. all the folks that were out here, made me feel like not only is it doable, it's tangible, and could potentially be profitable. Yeah, no, for sure. And then like it's also like a thing to where it's like like these little bitty rewards that I was starting to get being an independent artist and doing it, not the pay to play shit. And like, right. like knowing that there was a scene that like, if Noah felt like you had something, mm-hmm. like he'd at least give you five minutes and I didn't have to give him $200 <laughs> to figure that out. Sure. You know what I mean? No so, Sean Healy shit. Yeah, on the real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cause, I, Cause when I was living in LA, that yeah, was the only way you gonna open up thing. for Kendrick. You gonna open up for anybody that had any kind of significance that came yeah. to the city? Have you? Did you ever deal with? Deal, deal okay, with so I got a very funny story about <laughs> Sean Healy. Like, like this. Oh, is we gonna, starting off high. Go yeah, ahead. This go is, ahead. This is gonna fuck y'all up, but this is. It's also a lesson to be learned here. Okay. Okay. So like, I was I was supposed to open up for Pusha T in San Francisco, right? In two thousand oh, in two thousand eleven. That's through, that's good timing th- right th- there through you know. Sean Healy, right? Right. But I had to sell forty tickets. Right. Okay. And if you don't get those forty tickets off, you don't perform. Right. Yeah. Okay. So me and like two of my homies, we jump on the Greyhound. We get, we go to um, San Francisco, and we walking around Oakland and San Francisco. We sleeping on the homies' floor, like we really trapping really it out. To make this happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah, like, yeah. damn, we don't know how we're gonna get these tickets off, but we gonna try, <laughs> right? So we walking up and down the street, like you know what I mean, trying to get these tickets off. I probably sold like one ticket. You know out what I mean? Forty. Yeah, bro, I didn't sell none. Like, I, I, and then like a lot of it was us bullshitting. Like, yeah. we, uh, like we didn't have the confidence to really go up to people like that. It was just, yeah, it was yeah. just all new to me. Like, you feel me? So I'm trying to get these tickets off. I didn't. Like, I ended up having to go in my pocket to try to make up the difference of the ticket sales that I didn't mm-hmm. sell. You know what I'm saying? Just like really there. some I've lame ass shit. Yeah, yeah. Right. So long story short, I get to the venue and I don't have all the money or and I don't have. I still had these tickets in my hand. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, can I just do like five, ten minutes? I got something mm-hmm. or whatever. So uh, they was like, nah, you can't. Like, just straight to my face. Like, nah. And then they were like really assholes about it. Like, dude, you didn't sell anything? I was like, I sold a few. Yeah. But it's like, and really, I took some money in my po- I basically took money out of my pocket and said I sold some. Yeah, like, yeah. Basically, all y'all want for me to do is pay off for That's it. it. That's all y'all want. Because this show is going to sell out. Niggas push a T. You know what I mean? And, and my thing is... You- and I, I have I have really uh, controversial viewpoints yeah. on the whole pay to play because I think there's some scenarios that does make sense for the promoters yeah. and they need to do it because of, you know, just 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 a necessity mm-hmm. to ensure that their bottom line is taken care of. They, yeah. they still got to pay the venue. I get that. Yeah. But to a certain degree, I got to stop doing it. I forget the camera. Yeah. For but to a certain degree, the shit becomes your you're booking me on my ability to yeah. do your fucking job. No, no, I'm real. not a promoter exactly. of a show. Exactly. And that was my <laughs> thing. And so, but look, check this out. So look, so this is the lesson, kids. So fast forward, <laughs> fast forward to 2000 and I think uh, 18. Mm-hmm. Sean Healy is calling me and hitting me and Chewy no up to shit. do a show. No and they shit. paying me now. And they, Did he remember? Uh, or did you even bring I it up? I doubt it. Yeah. And, and and I supposedly was blackballed. Like they sent me an email saying, like, you know, you didn't send me a said, blackball email. No, you did. I swear to God, from Sean Healy. Only for them to turn right back around and put like twenty five hundred dollars in my pocket for the show. <laughs> I swear to God, that's on my soul. If y'all don't believe me, just 
<laughs> All you gotta do is type in Triz, Chewy, Sean Healy. The 2018 show will pop up. We did like three shows. I did like three shows for them. I remember that. And I, remember, I remember that run. Yeah, and and, and I did. We did really good in ticket sales. Like I made a lot of money with them. Like, Can't nobody, like, I, like I wish I would have had these kind of conversations early on yeah. because the idea of getting blackballed at one point in time mm-hmm. early in my career mm-hmm. was like that was the worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. Once somebody told you that you were blackballed. You know, you and you couldn't it. get on. You believed it. I can't get on the <laughs> blogs. I can't like because yeah. to be to be honest, like there was folks who were so connected in that arena mm-hmm. that because of who was behind them, mm-hmm. say it's a major artist at the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's a major at the time. They have the power to be like, nah, nah, nah. nah. Mm-hmm. I don't. If you do anything with this person, we're not giving you any access to this person. And this person's on the way up. Yeah. Do you not want this money? So they'll easily just say that. But it's so yeah. funny to me how finicky this shit can be. Yeah. And that uh, people, when you just hang around, mm-hmm. you'd be surprised how many of those closed doors just start to open up. Yeah. Just because you're still around. Yeah. And not even just around, but you're you're you found a way to elevate what you were doing, and it's like. Yeah. Hey, Triz, my man. Yeah, and and not only that, <laughs> and it's not only that. Like, can't nobody blackball me. Can't nobody blackball yeah. anybody. Like, there's all there's so much money in the world. It's so mm-hmm. many, bro. It's like what is it? Seven billion people in the world. Like they say, they they predicted. I think by twenty forty, it might be nine billion. Come on, so man. it's growing. Come on, I'm bro. Saying. And then I think about all the artists that I've never heard of that got crazy fan bases living in that house on the hill. Yeah, like, yeah. No, I don't need you. You feel me? What are we like, doing? Whatever is not over here is over here. So, yeah. like, I'm not tripping. You feel me? And, and sure enough, nigga. When you talk about this parts of the world that don't even have, like, the same kind of internet access that we enjoy, mm. when you got parts of the world that don't have the same kind of, like, cultural structure that we mm-hmm. have, how in the fuck mm-hmm. are you going to blackball somebody? You can't. I think you can blackball them from your circle of friends. For sure. I, I can easily tell Curtis King not to fuck with this X Y Z nigga. Yeah, easy. That's but, easy. But but even then, because you see so many, so much of the loyalty is not really loyalty in the music yeah. industry. So much of that shit is conditional. Yeah. For like sure. I'll listen to you because right now you paying me. But let us get into some kind of conflict. I'm calling this nigga first. Straight up. Terrible. It's all bro. It's business. <laughs> it's always business. <laughs> It's business and relationships. Yeah. You feel me? Like yeah. I always tell people, can't nobody tell me not to fuck with somebody. Like mm-hmm. now, if it's on some like you know straight disrespect, and it's just like yo, no, this dude's a piece of shit. Then well, I'll judge that on my own. Right. But like, if you if you had a bad experience with somebody, and and that's just your experience, but my experience has always been good with him. I'm not gonna cut him off. Yeah. I don't do that. I don't even do that. I don't tell people like, oh yeah, don't fuck with such and such. Because how, how would that conversation go? If if you were telling me. Yeah. About somebody, I feel like you would tell me flat out, like yeah. you know, I don't fuck with him, but be careful. Like, how would you approach? That That's how I would be, like, oh damn, I had a bad experience with this guy. Yeah, so, like I'm not telling you not to fuck with him. My experience wasn't cool, and then yeah. I would just, I would rather not be around when he's around. That's, that's I've fair. had I've had that I've had that conversation with numerous people. That's fair already. But I have never told anybody don't if fuck you fuck with this person, then I won't fuck with you. I've never I've never done that. That's a terrible way to to move or live your life. But there's a lot of folks who do operate that way. Yeah. Um, I, I, I did have a feeling at one point in time that that was definitely me in that situation mm-hmm. where, when I was actively pushing for these blogs, yeah, there was a point in time that I was like, there's certain blogs I would not be able to get on. Two Doughboys is one mm-hmm. of them. Oh really? I. Uh, it was a few of them, bro. They were though, very political. As well. And I, I found that out later on, especially yeah. when I started to see like. The person that I saw getting, the people that I would see getting posted on there all the time, I would go out to a show. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's like Low End Theory. Right. And they're opening the show, and I'm like, <laughs> damn, all them comments, all of that push that they're getting, mm. they can't even bring four, 10 people to the show. Come on, bro. But you deprioritizing the people that could actually bring you real traffic. Yeah. To your fucking site that you yeah. really are concerned. Like, that was my whole thing yeah. about the blog era, and I want to talk to you about that. Yeah. And that with the blog era, that was it's so funny how now the streaming companies, their biggest bottom line is advertisement. Right. Right. That's mm-hmm. why they make it so prominent upon their 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 their, their websites. Back then for bloggers, mm-hmm. it was advertisement. It was, it was the, the Google ads, it was mm-hmm. the stuff that they can have up there while the you're looking the banners mm-hmm. while you're looking up there. That's why they had Coca Cola for a lot of these mm-hmm. folks. And that was what they were concerned about, but mm-hmm. also making sure that they took care of their 
you know, homeboys. I went to high school with them, or mm-hmm. they're they're you know friends of a friends of a PR. Yeah. But that was my shit. Is like, do y'all? If y'all not in the business of bringing new music to your listeners that they would enjoy, mm-hmm. what are you in the business of? I what the music industry does it. I don't. Yeah. I understand it, but what are you really in the business of? No, straight up. Yeah, no. Nah. And then like, what would you consider the blog era? What two thousand eight to two thousand like thirteen or? 14? That's a good accurate. That's a good accurate date on that. Two thousand thirteen. Is when it started Might to fizzle out. Started to fizzle out. Yeah, cause I didn't start the. It's crazy, cause the blogs didn't start paying attention to me till it started to get fizzled out. Like my first two dope boy posts ever was America's Most Blunted with me and Chewy, <laughs> and I'll never forget it. Cause Chewy called me, he's like, "Man, they don't ever post my shit," and I was like, wow. "They've never posted my shit before." And that's because uh, for those that don't know, America's Most Blunted is this series of albums that I have with uh, Chewy from Sacramento. Which is uh, super dope independent yeah. artists, and, well. yeah. and that's and America's Most Blunted is my biggest project ever. Yeah, like, that's considered to me. That's my classic album. Would you tell somebody to start there in your catalog to get a get an understanding, or would, um, would it be something different for you? No, nah, it would be something different because yeah. that's like my stoner family community. Yeah, okay, you know what I mean? Okay. I wouldn't have them start there, but like a lot of people do start there because that's Word. the first shit that pop up. Got it. But yeah, like. I didn't start getting in touch with the blogs until I dropped that project. Like, but I I was I was doing the same thing, bro. I was I was always sending emails like, "Yo, check this out, whoopty wooty woop." But yeah. I would not get no love. Shit. Nothing. It's Nothing. like, man, being left out during that time was like, damn, nobody's fucking with my shit. It's funny because it almost it almost mimics the way that playlisting works now. Yeah, that's you, exactly. You, you what have that to is. have a friend of a friend of a yeah, friend that's yeah, that you yeah, got to yeah. connect it with. But yeah, yeah, it felt it definitely felt like that for me too. And that you yeah. feel left out. But also, it's like, you going to post this, though? Right. <laughs> or, right. no, no, no. Or right. we would see some of these folks at, at like, like networking situations, and they'd be like, Curtis King, yeah, I, know, I, I definitely know who you are. Yeah. What the fuck are you not posting my shit? <laughs> nah, straight up. <laughs> and I wouldn't say that, but I'd yeah. be like, that's crazy that you say that because, yeah. uh, you know, when I would submit music mm-hmm. or whatever, it was, and, and, and to be fair, they can do whatever the hell they wanted to do back then sure. with their own websites. Yeah. If anything, I'm ex- I'm glad that happened the way it did, even though yeah. it didn't feel right in the moment, because I yeah. think that it only it only drove the uh, the energy of independence. I yeah. think about even like how Odd Future mm-hmm. was like, all right, fuck them, we gonna yeah. we gonna shout y'all out at the damn award show. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, that was a trip. And then I noticed what uh, what Tyler was doing. He was like posting. He had his own website. Yeah, this is before like. The younger artist was like having websites. Mm-hmm. Websites didn't really start becoming a thing until like the blog era started to like fizzle out. Where like, they wouldn't even accept your shit unless you had a website. Exactly. And I remember him posting shit on like Tumblr and shit, posting his new projects and shit like that. Yeah. He was jumping the gun pretty early. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like so. But yeah, the blog era was crazy. So, was crazy. yeah, and 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 with having your website mm-hmm. comes having your own digital real estate, and that's mm-hmm. something I want to kind of transition into in that. Mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of conversation going on about the places that your music or the mediums your music should be available at. Yeah. And there's a lot of people, bro, I have been firing off on my Twitter. Like, I'm already on. I, I mean, I've been on my Trish shit. Like, yeah, no, you feel me? Like, Trish, you out. I'm look, like, look, yeah. look, look, Trish, usually I go on Trish's page and I'm like, yeah. how the hell do you have the time yeah. to fire off all of this shit and then drop music in the midst of that no nah, straight up and cause then, you don't stop <laughs> nah on the real and then like all that to me like whenever I do say some shit that ruffle feathers and stuff Damn. nigga I'm you know the single coming you yeah. feel me oh, yeah, yeah. like you gotta <laughs> you're part of the rollout yeah you part of the rollout mm-hmm. <laughs> you volunteered to it so yeah. what I'm talking about specifically for those who don't know um, I have been really doubling down on my tweets <laughs> you, you know what I mean don't know, Double down in general Now you can say It's in the name of independence It's in the name No I'm trying to get my Twitter yeah. check Stop talking to me I need my Twitter check yeah. First of all I need my tri- Twitter check Because mm-hmm. you are, I already got beef With all these social medias Who, who don't pay yeah. On my Twitter check Yeah. So with that said I said in general the, the, the thing that I came into here with The only motive I came into here with I have to tweet more To get past the, I think it's like a Five million impression threshold Yeah, yeah. So I just started saying You know what all of this shit that I've been saying for the last 10 months here mm-hmm. on my channel, I'm just going to make it a text form. Yeah, yeah. Had no idea the amount of people that were ready for that conversation mm-hmm. that wanted to 
fight that conversation. Yeah. And the one recently came after Spotify. You saw this shit? Yeah, okay, Spotify? Yeah, yeah. yeah we oh, definitely got to talk about that. I, I know you've seen yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Before we get into that, what is like your viewpoint as it pertains to your business model as an independent artist about streaming? Like, How do you view that as a part of the, the pie or the equation? Um, it's definitely the uh, one of the most... I went on, lucrative isn't the word, but it's one of those things where like that's where the majority of the people discover music. Okay, is like you know, um, Apple Music and Spotify. You know what I mean? Like suggested artists. You know what I'm saying? Like when you scroll up on a uh, on my page, a yeah. lot of artists that I've done music with or I sound like similar artists, similar yeah. artists. Yeah, like so it plays a major role. Like I remember seeing you tweet like we were we were talking about this like maybe taking our shit off of there, but I was it, bro I was on my, my Prince in 2015 shit. Yeah. I was like man, get this music all the way off of here yeah. before they did the threshold shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but then like where it fucks us up at is our Spotify is a conversation starter. Like whenever I'm in That's a room, a put it. Yeah. whenever I'm in a room, I swear to God, like. I know why somebody's asking to see my Spotify because you're trying to check to see how you're serious I am. Me. You're trying to validate me. That yeah. I, it's the same thing with Instagram. They were like, "Oh, what's your Instagram?" So let me give you one pushback on yeah. this, and this is this is not me arguing. This is just yeah. having a really good conversation. Yeah. Do you want that kind of fan? Um, I do it too. Mm. So, so it's, like, it's almost like a, a mirror of you. Too, yeah, so like, because I ain't gonna hold you. Like, yeah. we all do it. Like, <laughs> if if I I'll be sitting in a room out in the studio with some rappers, and I hear one of them popping it, and I'll be like, he Check don't even know I'm doing that <laughs> on my soul, nigga. I'll be like, I'll be like, man, let me see what this nigga he talking me about. In his head like, nigga, shut up. Yeah, on the real you ain't so doing I, none of that. Yeah, like I do it. So, cause it's like it, it is a good way to like be like, okay, how serious is he? Yeah. When the last time this nigga dropped? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, how consistent is he dropping? You know what I'm saying? What's your follow or what's your listeners like? Right. Yeah, that that gives me an idea of what the fuck is going on because right now that is the thing. Yeah. So I could you can't take, ignore that. Right. I mean, like. I could easily be like, oh, yeah, I, I don't have a Spotify. Go to Tri As soon as you say that, they're going to be like, oh, he's not serious. Uh, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, see, that. I mean, that's something that you can't ignore. Yeah. I think my mindset behind it was the kind of people who would go the extra step to support the music and listen to the music would weed out the kind of people that come there for shallow reasons. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think we all do it. Like, I do the same. I can't help it. Like, if I, if I look at a post mm -hmm. that I'm really rocking with, I wonder how many other people rocked with it. For sure. It's almost programmed in my, my, my brain, mm -hmm. right? I'm not saying I'm right yeah. for it, but it's there. Yeah. With that said, though, I started thinking, like, the kind of person that would pull out their credit card mm -hmm. when they had no plans to do it mm -hmm. would have to be someone that you have, you've invested a lot of time with, or they invest yeah. a lot of time with you, and you mm -hmm. got them, like, here. You mm -hmm. have them here. Mm -hmm. But in order to get people here, that's a process. That's not just a... Yeah. Oh, this shit hard as hell. Yeah, they'll buy it, but will they will they actually enjoy it, share it, put yeah. it on their stories? Yeah, 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 yeah. So my mindset about that was, okay, let's strip off all of the different avenues that um a a, a fair weathered fan could be in. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. only have it to where it's like, if you're at my website, mm -hmm. on some level, yeah. you're here to make some kind of a decision. For sure. If you go to my band camp, mm -hmm. You're here to make some well yeah. back before Bandcamp got sold and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. But that was my whole ideology on it. But mm -hmm. now, now you know, I do understand that there is the discoverability. And so when I changed my tone on it, because I talked to one of my former one of my former managers and the homie Salas, mm -hmm. I was like, all right, cool, cool. I'm gonna just make it available for those yeah. who want to for the convenience of it. Yeah, these niggas put a threshold out there. Oh, for sure. Come on, man. They always they always plotting behind our backs, bro. That's why, like, I'm always sitting at the crib, like, and trying to figure out ways to, like, okay, how can I make something exclusive for this fan? Mm. Somebody who definitely fucks with me. Like, when I did the live from the crib shit for, yeah. on Bandcamp, and yeah, I was yeah. like, yo, I'm, put, I'm about to put out this new EP, but I'm never putting it on. Just, I was testing the water. I'm yeah. like, I'm never putting it on Spotify. I'm not going to take my no music from y'all. But this right here, you're not going to be able to get it on the streaming platforms. Mm. You're only going to be able to get it on Bandcamp or my website. How'd that Feel go? Me? And it's only three bucks. And only three bucks. How'd it go, though? It, it went really well. Like, yeah. uh, I, like, like one of my biggest donations was like $50. Sheesh. And that's cool. You know, I, ha I had a lot of people no, like- No, I thought music don't sell, Triz. You feel me? 
Come on, bro. I'm sorry. Go ahead. You yeah. see, you got a lot of people to do what now? <laughs> you, <laughs> nah, yeah, stop, like stop, stop all that lying, Triz. Music man. don't sell, bro. Uh, man, that tie neg- all of this cap. That negative ass energy. They, that, that. <laughs> but you know what though? People like that, they quit. They give up. They feel like they've been hearing this narrative so much. Like, I can't tell you how many times a week somebody asks me like, "Oh, what else do you do?" Like, nah, this is all I do. Yeah, you actually live off of it. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, how? Nigga, I work. I, I fucking get up and I write music and I go to the studio and I I, I, link, I network. Whenever yeah. there's an event going on, if there's a homie in town, my homie Ritz was just in town. Mm-hmm. I don't go there just to watch niggas. I go there to network and talk to people and let people know what I got going on. Oh, Triz, what you got going on? I got this drop and I got some new merch out. Right, right, like, right. You got to be out and you got to be active. You got to be networking. You got to be talking. You got to be always doing something. You don't always have to be in the studio. You got to be doing something, though. That's your I, job. That's go, literally go, your job. Go take photos. Like yeah. update your update your sh- your uh your Instagram. Update your Twitter. You got to be constantly posting, constantly in their face. Run some sponsor ads. Just always have something going. Yeah. Don't chase the money. The money gonna come. Well, it seems like nowadays they're not even. I think that chasing the money might have been a generation before the one we're seeing now. And I don't want to generalize everybody in this, yeah. but the kind of folks that I see to come across my timeline, mm-hmm. they seem to be allergic to money. <laughs> <laughs> Not even I'm like I'm, I'm I'm dead ass serious. Like they'll come to me and and so I'm gonna draw you guys' attention to this. Uh, obviously, those that are listening are not gonna be able to see this. But let me pop up my Twitter account because I had a tweet that <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I thought I was gonna be Triz that had the tweet. Here we was gonna we be go. talking about we talked about this two weeks ago. But I I guess I've been popping off. I've been Let's popping off and saying some shit here and there. Let's get it. But um, I had a tweet and I'm gonna bring it here on the screen so you guys can see it. <clears throat> but the tweet was just some simple math. Mm -hmm. So there's a website that uh, does something called a reverse royalty calculation Mm -hmm. and that I can put how much money I want to make. It'll tell me based upon the latest numbers in terms of the percent, the uh, the cents to the dollar, how many streams I would have to get on every platform in order to do this individually. (laughs) I remember seeing this. I just, all I did, all I wanted to do was share some math. Niggas got, you know, yeah. most oh, folks got yeah. it. I seen But this. a lot of folks kind of got got a little angry about this. This, this, this is two days ago. I'm going to share this here on my page right now, or share this on the uh, actual here. Oh, um, wow. I'm getting updates from my mom. Okay. Okay, okay cool. Got to make sure that the little <laughs> one's good. They went to the pumpkin patch today, but I got to share this here. I got to share this here because y'all, y'all niggas is allergic is to money. Crazy. Why y'all don't like money no more? You going you didn't let somebody come in here. And I am telling you, Maybe you let them come in here and tell you that your music is only worth point zero 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 three. Yeah. And then when somebody tells you there's a way to make more money, you're like You get mad at it. Nobody can do that. That's impossible. Oh, yeah. Come well, stay on, your ass bro. over there. You then. know what? You should you should definitely follow your own advice. Yeah, cool then. You wanna be negative about it. I think I'm gonna talk about that on here. I, I told you I had a tweet that's gonna shoot off in the midst of this. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the tweet was gonna be some of y'all For deserve. Real. Some of y'all deserve streaming and all this silly shit going yeah. on. Some of y'all deserve, y'all deserve streaming. It. Some of y'all, you y'all are a match made in heaven. For real. Gonna try to tell somebody that's actually making the money. <laughs> it's not possible, bro. It's cap, bro. Trying to tell me it's not possible. It's like, cap. what are you talking about? It's possible, bro. That's a problem, man. Fucking weirdo. This, this dude, little dude called me a weirdo. Because I said, <laughs> hey, I'm about to show you this right, show, show y'all this right now. Hold on. Here's the tweet. This here's the crazy. tweet. We're getting this up here right now. So I'm going to read it for those of you that are obviously listening here to the recorded version of this podcast. Um, but uh, here, here's that good old tweet right here. And it reads. <laughs> <laughs> I said, question, sell a CD for $10 to one person. Just one. Yeah, and you just how many, one. How many folks on the planet right now? Seven some billion. Seven, seven eight billion. Mm. Or find two thousand eight hundred and seventy four Spotify subscribers. Mm. Premium. Somebody premium. told me that they got to be premium in order to get that money. Yeah, for sure, for sure. To stream it. Yeah, come on. And they came out the woodworks. Most folks who got this, like even shout out to Domi Shondon. Shondon came mm. up and showed support to it. He was like, bro. It, they different, but they're not gonna understand this. It doesn't make. But I'm like, what you? What part don't you understand? Yeah, it's math. And if you notice, if you notice, this is what I want y'all to notice right here. The the um the platform that has the most like listeners, most active subscribers, it takes more 
uh, subscribers in order for you to get paid. So like, look mm -hmm. at Napster. Nobody be on Napster. So <laughs> Napster like, look man, five hundred of y'all will get y'all ten dollars. Five hundred. Yeah, got, yeah, yeah like here. you feel me? So <laughs> but, why would the hell would I give Napster that when y'all y'all the fools that started this shit to be in the video? <laughs> the real, they, they started this bullshit. You started this bullshit. You deserve them little on pennies. On the real. So like, if <laughs> if Napster was as big as Spotify, then yeah. Spotify you would need to have twenty eight hundred to be in that threshold. That's wild, bro. That's a trip. That's wild. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I don't even want to give this person. I really don't want to give this person no 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 kind of pub on this one because it's not about it's not yeah. about them, but it's about the idea that they represent. Because man, when I tell you, I had to <laughs> shut off the blind. She came through here. <laughs> uh, let me try to see if I can find. Y'all gonna stop tagging me in that damn post. <laughs> I seen that. That's just funny. Somebody said Curtis King of Queens is insane. <laughs> that is insane. Um, I'm gonna find this right now, actually. So. There's a gentleman that popped up on my page, and he said, uh, who the F uses CDs? Yeah. And I told him, I said, a scarcity mindset will stop you from even researching this. Yeah. Using CDs is very different than collecting physical memorabilia from your favorite artist. Mm. The last time I checked, concerts don't stop putting merchandise up. Come on. They don't start pulling up. They don't stop pulling out CDs. Yeah. They don't care what you have at home to use. Yeah. They know that you are the most vulnerable. You know what is crazy? It's like mm -hmm. I was talking to my mom about this really morbid conversation in yeah. general about how funerals work and like uh, plots work and how they have three different charges based upon how what kind of burial you want. Yeah. If you want to get in that wall where it's eye level, that's the highest price. Yeah. If you want to get it to where they call it heart level, that's a different price. If you want to get it on the ground, that's the cheapest you can get. Mm -hmm. The fact that there's three different tiers for where they'll put your dead body. Sick. Sick. And you gonna try to tell me you can't sell one cylinder disc? Hey, come on, bro. My shit was this. Hold on, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pass it back to you, Tris. But this, this, nah, this, good. this is the shit I had to get off real quick because they still <laughs> shooting off these these tweets to me, and I'm like, y'all sound crazy. I said, let me get this straight. <clears throat> Make sure y'all can read. It. I said, let me get this straight. Y'all scared to sell music to the kids of the parents that bought pet rocks in 1975 <laughs> true story there was something called a pet rock collectible toy made in 1975 by advertising executive gary doll they were rocks my nigga rocks rocks packaged in custom cardboard boxes complete with ventilation holes because you need your rocks to breathe what and draw and straw bedding imitating a pet carrier the fad lasted about six months, ending after a short increase in sales during the Christmas season. Kids were asking to get a pet rock. Come on, man. And these were kids that were still going outside. Come on, bro. You trying to tell me the kids, the offspring of these pet rock owning kids, these slinky owning parents, you can't sell them a cylinder disc and yeah. figure out how, how to package what? it up? Gary Dawg was cold. Gary Dawg sell like, water to a well, like, boy. Watch this, watch this. I'm gonna sell these what? things. It's rock in a box. That's nuts. That's sick. What's kind of your thoughts on on you know the mm -hmm. the the pushback, the conversation around physical? Because yeah, we know that CDs don't sell the way yeah. that they once did, but that doesn't stop a dedicated. Like yeah. I don't think they understand what a dedicated fan looks like. Tris, then, what does that look like? And then first of all, dedicated. I want y'all to know this real quick. 80% of the vinyl buyers don't have a player. 80? 80. 80%. That is a fact. 80% of people who buy vinyl oh never God. open it. Hold on. Let me drop this. Never one. open it. Come on, bro. Oh, they going to get my bomb? They, there we go. Somebody Straight go up. Come on. So, like, a serious fan, somebody... Okay, look. Look at it like this. A lot of times, I'll drop some physicals, and I'll only drop 100. And it's mm -hmm. like, you can only get this 100 after 100 is over with. Yeah. So How much you think it costs for 100 of those to get packaged up for those who don't mm, know? It'll like probably run figure. you around like three, $400, $350, $350. around okay. there. You feel me? Word. So if I sell 100 at $10 a pop, that's a G-ball. You <laughs> feel me? So I'm going to make my money back. <laughs> and then if I sign that motherfucker, that's $20. Yeah. So I'm gonna make me two. I'm gonna make me fifteen and two thousand dollars. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? <laughs> so most people won't sign copies. Like if I gotta rip open the plastic and sign your shit, I'm gonna charge you more. You know what's so funny about you saying that? And I want you to keep cooking. But what's so yeah. funny is that people will literally have you autograph whatever they can. You can write on. Yeah. And that is the most valuable thing to them. Mm -hmm. Straight up. It's a sweaty T-shirt. Mm-hmm. That can end up going from being one step away from being in the trash mm -hmm. to being 
two thousand dollars on eBay right now. Yep. I got a sweaty T shirt that Triz signed right here at the, yep. at the at the at the you know at this show that he just mm-hmm. sold out. Yeah, that all of a sudden has value. If that sweaty ass T-shirt has value, you gonna tell me that this packaging, the CD, mm-hmm. forget the function of the use of it. Most mm-hmm. cars, the new cars are not being yeah. made with CDs, but I'm sorry, everybody doesn't have a new car. Yeah. Most no, cars really. still have access to yeah. at least a CD player. Yeah. Um, you trying to tell me after all of that, you can't get that? It's not about the compact disc. It's about the packaging in, in its entirety. Yeah. This is a piece of art that you got yeah. directly from the source of your favorite artist. Get the yeah. fuck out of here. Yeah, what not are you in, about? in an era where people don't even print physicals. A lot of times, you know what I mean. When albums Shh. drop, all you see is the digital. Like on, the man. fact that you can hold it. Yeah. It 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 it's a it's a totally different feeling. Yeah. And my favorite artist signatures on it. You feel me? <laughs> And he sent it directly to my house. This nigga probably took it to the post office himself. Oh my god! Like that's a whole nother. And that's my guy. Like that's that's my guy. It's my favorite female artist. That's yeah. my person. Like yeah. you held this. Yeah, on the real. You touched my life with yeah. you. But I, I, it feels like they don't understand that experience because mm-hmm. they're making their best version of somebody else's music. It's always it's all in the planning. It's all in the packaging. It's all in the thought process. Even the cover art, like when you get in the cover art made, like you're trying to say, like this is a representation of what's on this album. Mm. You know what I mean? And if I can hold something that you that was an idea first, that's mm-hmm. like to me as a consumer, I fuck with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I buy merch. I'm more of an instant gratification type of dude, so I typically buy my merch at the merch booth. Yeah. I don't I don't really order merch like that. But um, yeah, I like having the product in my hand. You know Man. what I mean? Like I got, I got a uh, it's it's a it's a remaster, but I got a uh, a copy of a copy of the Chronic on vinyl, and I like really I like that. See, I like the fact that I have the Chronic on vinyl. And I think we need to talk me? about that too. Is that yeah. m- do you feel like physical is for everybody? No, it's for everybody. You don't feel like it is. Why is uh, it? Oh shit! How about this? Let me preface this. Cause I agree. If you're gonna say that it's not, I agree. Yeah. But do you feel like people should at least try? You should always have that option, and that's money. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I can't tell you how many times I just be chilling at the crib, and I and I see a merch order for two hundred dollars because somebody went on there and bought a vinyl, a t-shirt, and a CD. <laughs> like, did like that 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 right there? Yeah. That's like I don't know how many thousand streams. You feel what I'm saying? Well, let's 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 do the math, Tris. Yeah, let's do it. Let's 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 let's, let's pull it. up this reverse royalty. I love this yeah. thing right here. Shout For out real. to whoever made this. The reverse royalty calculator. Yeah. Uh, you can go to streamingcalculator.com, mm-hmm. and then uh, they have one called revor- reverse royalty. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> I got my room and everything situated. <laughs> that was the warning shot. That was a warning shot, Tris. Yeah. Are y'all done? Is y'all done or is y'all finished? Y'all done or y'all finished? <laughs> no, we still pull up, we still pulling up this reverse calculator. That's still happening. I don't care. I don't care. Nobody got to say. Yeah, y'all got to get a dose of this game real quick. That's, that's that's that is going to happen. Hold on. Y'all gonna get, get a this dose shit. of this game. Oh. Mm hmm. Ax it back again. Oh, there we go. And now they got us in 720p. That's sexy. Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all trying? That's that's trying that's hilarious. All right. So let me go ahead and delete this real quick. And uh, we will get back into this. Uh, turn this music real quick and then build it from here. That is crazy. Computer That's moving wild, slow, bro. slow. Wild, what have wild. I done? It's wild. Didn't uh, Stevie drop his uh, project on Bandcamp only? No, no, no. It was on streaming too, but oh. I think it might have been there first. Oh, okay, which yeah. Which is a huge deal. That was right? dope. Yeah, that was dope. And, and and I don't think it needs to be an either or situation. That yeah. was kind of the message I got when I had that conversation with Salas yeah. is that it doesn't need to be an either or. It can be a, all right, this is what I'm prioritizing. This is what I'm going to advertise. Mm-hmm. And then y'all just catch whatever else you want to catch on whatever platform is convenient for you. But I'm not promoting that shit. No, nah, facts. Especially not with that threshold shit. I am facts. not... I am not about to sit up here and promote your platform after you can tell me after you told me. All right, we back now. Sorry about that, y'all. Let's get it. Um, yeah, we're good. That is wild. So, for whatever reason, you know. They tried to that, censor us. They tried to get us out of here. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you one thing that they can't stop that's going to happen is that I'm com- I'm pulling this back up. I'm pulling this back up. They're trying to shut us down, man. The first episode is crazy because we ain't even it. got to the good shit yet. For real. <laughs> <laughs> we really ain't got to the good shit. We ain't shit. even get to the good shit yet. Like, calm down. Yeah. It's going to be all right. still the appetizer right here. It's still the appetizer. This is episode one. You, yeah, you let me worry about anything. 
Oh, man. All right, all good. So this is a reverse cal- royalty calculator. They can't shut down the DIYers. No, I they heard can't. that. Hold heard on. Is that. Is that the wrong one? Look at even my, even my, my shit. We just switching over here. Amen to that, G. They can't shut us down. Can't shut that down. Mm-mm. That's what's talking about. Yeah, for real. Somebody going to have to tell the truth, and I'm going to tell it. The suits out the booth. All right, so back to normal business and what I had already planned. So transition this. This is a royalty calculator. We were talking about something that you sold. How much did you sell, you say? Um, Of the, uh, what's it called? Oh, like if I sell like something in a day, $200. $200. So. <laughs> Come on, bro. Come on. 200 bucks. Are you insane? 200 bucks. Are you insane? What are y'all? Are y'all playing the lottery? Are you on, playing bro. music? Are you playing a music career? Nigga, that's fast food and gas. Come on, bro. Come on, man. Stop playing with me. So you always got to have that as an option. You always got to have some tangible shit as an option. Come on, bro. You need them T-shirts. You need, nigga, you need them CDs. You need all of that. Now, and going back to your question, you was like, do I think physical is for everybody? No, because like, I always look at my wife as the average fan. Average, she okay, average is the down. commercial. She don't give a damn about a vinyl. Right. You feel me? <laughs> right. Most people don't. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But... For every, I would say for every, out of 20 people, five people are going to buy a vinyl. Right. You know what I mean? And that's cool. Yeah. Because you think, out of, okay, 20 people walk up to my merch booth, five people buy, buy a vinyl for $50. 50 bucks. Yeah, 50 bucks. Because of like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, what's that? Uh, What, like, my math is hella trash, but five times, so with that, 250 Five. You see, said five, 50? 50? 550 Yeah, so, 250 yeah, 250 Yeah, 250 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so 250 you, and then we just did the math calculator. I mean, the reverse calculator. That you're going to need over 60,000 Spotify listeners, subscribers, yeah. to make that. You feel me? <laughs> what game are we playing? Come on, bro. What game are we playing? So for Come those on, you, that are listening, you can't hear or you can't see what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. We just put into the reverse royalty calculator. $200 mm-hmm. gives you $200. If you wanted to make $200 on streaming, not today, but within the next three months, because the payouts are delayed. If I'm not, mm-hmm. is that, is that yeah, correct, Yeah, payouts right? is mad delay, like two so, months. <laughs> so two to three months, you're going to have to wait on this $200. Uh. You would have had to do as many TikToks as you can, whatever your mm-hmm. mediums are for promotion. TikToks, Instagram posts, reels, mm-hmm. YouTube videos, interviews, all the press runs, which yeah. is part of your job description. But you would have mm-hmm. to do that to the number of 57,471 mm-hmm. streams on Spotify in order to get $200. Nasty work. <laughs> Nasty work. So I, my question is, what, what makes somebody see a number like that, right? Mm-hmm. And Apple Music is right there behind in mm-hmm. 29,000 by a significantly smaller margin. Mm-hmm. Uh, Napster, like, man, just give me 11,000 of them. Yeah. I can tell you, I get $2 right now. But For my real. thing is, what makes somebody as an artist, an independent art, not, not an independent, an up and coming, what makes somebody look at that number and say, all right, bet. <laughs> Straight up, just having their shit on the streaming platform, though, they think it looks good. You gonna look at fifty seven thousand and tell yourself instead of selling just one? We're not even talking, bro. We're not even talking about like doing the numbers they did Mm -hmm. back when like they were selling a hundred k in a week, five hundred. We're not talking about we're talking about one singular disc. This is how bad shit is. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of this stuff is programming to be Mm kind of like really, really break it down. And shit feels like programming in that. If I make you believe mm-hmm. that the your main product is mm-hmm. not worth any it's not mm-hmm. worth anything mm-hmm. and you start to echo that conversation, yeah. I never have to show up. Right up. You're gonna argue with the people like us. Yeah, yeah, straight up. Who are trying to make sure you put more coins mm-hmm. in your pocket because if you mm-hmm. if you right now, let's just assume that you're not you don't have no streaming farms. Mm-hmm. Let's assume that you don't cheat the game. Mm-hmm. And you're really doing these numbers. Yeah. The amount of money you could be leaving on the table just yeah. by simply saying, hey, this is not my primary focus. Like yeah. streaming's not our primary focus. But if you'd like to buy a CD mm-hmm. because this music touched you on this level, yeah. here it is. And it's pay what you want. Yeah, straight up. You're not even going to try it? Come on. Because you're afraid that because your, your, your group of five friends who don't listen to CDs, you think yeah. that's the dip, that's the whole, you know what I'm saying? Bro. So. I can't tell you how many times I've been to a show and made more off merch than my bottom line. What do you mean? In terms of what, what you got booked for? Yeah. yeah. So, like, I'll, I'll, 
I'll get booked. I typically, I, I don't mind telling y'all. We, we know we've been that's, honest. That's, that's really indie. Yeah, really indie really though. Indie. Podcast. I typically get paid like a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars for a show. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it's the homie, you know what I mean. They get the homie price, and that's between me and the homie. But um, sometimes I'll do two thousand in merch. I'll do seventeen hundred dollars in merch. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And then on bad nights, I'll do sixty dollars in merch. That yeah. happens. Yeah. And and you know who buys merch the least is California. <laughs> Swear to God, my home state. <laughs> Wait a minute, that's my a wrong one. I, 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 so. No, we don't. We, we don't. We don't hope so. That's a wrong one. That's a wrong one. But Bro. the you, see, you say California pays the least. Why do you the think Cali- California? Why? Why do you? Why has it been that way for you that California pays the least, even though that's home? Okay, I'm gonna explain something to you. One, California is spoiled. We they there is a hip hop show every single night in California. I don't give a fuck God, if it's so small, true. medium, yep. big arena. I don't give a fuck if it's the backyard, nigga. Mm-hmm. There's always a show going on in California. <laughs> Number two, the cost of living in California. You got to think. Okay, it cost them fifteen twenty dollars to get in there. Mm-hmm. They're gonna want to drink. Mm-hmm. A lot of these niggas get high, so they get the munchies and they want to eat. So mm-hmm. they're gonna spend money on food. Just hell of bar food. Just going to a show mm-hmm. is like a hundred dollar night, a hundred and fifty dollar night. Easy. So when you when they when they already in there, and they didn't already spent the hundred dollars, and then you and then they go to your merch booth and the shirt is twenty five, and then they want the vinyl too, bro. I ain't gonna lie. I I always bargain with my uh, customers. I'll be like, how much you got, bro? Yeah. If the shirt is twenty five, bro, I got fifteen. Give it here, bro. Here. Don't. That's yours. Nigga, it's all good, cause I. A lot of these, a lot of it is like you a walking billboard for me too. Yeah, you I'm know about what to I'm say, saying. That's, that's advertisement. That's way advertisement. Go. Like and and like I believe you. And if you're lying, you lying. That's not. Right. That's between you and God. I don't yeah. give a damn if you lying. How much you got on you? For sure, fool. I got. I got enough. I can spare. Yeah, Give me yeah. that 15, and here you go. Okay. You know, I'm getting the shirts at five dollars a pop anyway, right. so I'm still making my cheese. <laughs> I'm still making that on uh, still, uh, two yeah. times, three times over. It's yeah. all right. Yeah. It's unfortunate, and, and you yeah. make a lot of valid points in that because there's so much accessibility. You didn't even bring in the calculation of parking. Come on. We got one of the worst parking situations, if not behind like a Philadelphia or some of these folks. Yeah. Where you see the, the, uh, the parking wars are. are yeah. But, bro, like the parking situation could easily be if you valeting 20, on, 25, 20, 25 And don't let it be a Friday night. <sighs> a Friday night? Bro. What? What? Not to put no venues on blast, even though I think venues need to be on blast at mm-hmm. some point. You, see, you remember my my mm-hmm. idea that I have for you? Yeah, it, it, it was it was half off some uh off a, a Red Bull and, and vodka, but it was yeah. still a good idea. Yeah, I was like somebody instead of making fucking point uh, making report cards for rappers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let me let this settle in. Instead of making report cards for fucking rappers. <laughs> Especially yeah. independent rappers. Instead of yeah. making report cards for rappers, yeah. could we make report cards for these shitty ass venues mm-hmm. that have a have an effect? How about promoters? Ooh. Oh, promoters Ooh. Are, Ooh. are the worst of the worst. Can we make a report card for promoters? Because I think it's very unnecessary. I think it's so great that you and I can sit on a platform like this and talk about this and it yeah, not man. affect our bottom line because yeah. we know the folks who, when we get these phone calls, mm-hmm. we know it's great business. Yeah, for Shout sure. out to the homie Noah. Shout yeah. out to all the folks that we have booked with yeah. that understand this is the business. Yeah. But there's a lot of folks who don't understand the business aspect and they don't realize you booking me at this venue, mm-hmm. right? I'm trying to figure out ways to be in front of my fans and to get them to merge directly, especially if I'm on a, on a mm-hmm. campaign run. Mm-hmm. They don't understand like your shitty efforts to prepare this show, your shitty efforts to yeah. promote this show reflects on me. Fucks my brand up. It fucks me up. It fucks me up for sure. And I got to take accountability for yeah. saying yes, but if I keep saying no to all these different situations, yeah. when that rent's due at the end yeah. of the month. Come on, bro. <laughs> like like I can't tell you how many times like I had to, you know, accept a payment and this is the DIY shit. Yeah, yeah. I had to accept the payment lower than what I'm usually getting because oh my I gosh. I, I like nigga. I need to pay some shit. I need to take right, care of right. my bills at home, and it's like sometimes I'll be like, "Fuck it, man. I'm not doing it because I don't want to. I don't want people to. I don't want this promoter to think that he, it's easy to book me. You mm. know what I mean? So I'm battling that. I'm battling at home with my wife, who's mad that I took less bread. But at because you got to answer, you got to come gotta, home and say, "What were you? Yeah. What were you at instead of spending time with me?" Tonight? Exactly. You got to answer to shit like that, and they don't understand that. So like these promoters who be so money driven on. On um, you know, trying to make you know twenty dollars at the door, mm-hmm. and you know, 
All, all this keep t- the drink money, yeah, all that other all stuff. All that, that type you, of shit. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. y'all really, really like took the time to like make a really good flyer, only put the headliner and two acts on the bill. Oh, start the Lord. show when it's supposed to start. You know what I'm saying? If you and um not running the, not having somebody go on stage at twelve thirty. And you penalize like, me for not being a good promoter. Come on, bro. You hold on, I'm the headliner. It's Triz. You pen think about this. You penalize me. me? Yeah. The act that mm. I'm 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 just a part of mm-hmm. the the I'm a part I'm a big part of it, but I'm a part of the presentation that you have prepared, the plate that you prepared. Yeah. I'm the main course. I'm the main course. Yeah. But this is your plate. Yeah. You prepared the food, mm-hmm. put me in a position to where I'm doing everything I can to support, right? Yeah, I'm not yeah. going to become your promoter. I don't work for your promotion company. I am an artist that has a fan base. Yeah. And yes, my reach is larger than yours, but yeah. you're in the business of getting asses yeah. in the seats. Yeah. So then in turn to me and say, I know you're in a promote you you're in a you're in the process of promoting your album, but man, hey man, yeah. put your flyer on the on the on the on the timeline. Yeah. There's been times where I understand, like put the flyer on there, but I'm like, uh, are you open to me? This is part of yeah. my terms I have. Yeah. Are you open to me being more creative about the way that I present it? Yeah. Because if I stick that flyer on there, mm-hmm. you're gonna tank my retention. Mm-hmm. You're gonna tank my algorithm numbers, mm-hmm. and people are not. They either have already made a decision, mm-hmm. or they're gonna see it, and it's like, mm-hmm. so it's a flyer, and, and then Instagram is not gonna show it to other people because it's all text. It's all algorithm too. It's all algorithm. We won't even yeah. have a fighting chance. My yeah. reach is now limited, and then you'll turn around to me and be like, "Man, well, maybe bro's just not buzzing no more yeah, because like- he couldn't get." And it's like, bro, that, I, how many, you know how many times, bro, I done done shows and then I had niggas commenting on my post talking about, damn, I didn't know you was in town. Like, nigga, that's because the promoter didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Like, bro, the, m- one of my favorite promoters in L.A. right now is Underground Hip Hop. Shout out to like, them. Shout I out love them. Underground Hip Hop. Like, yeah. their their system and the way they promote and the way they are structured shows, the way they set it up is just so perfect. What, like, ma- what makes it different than the ones that you've done before? They're willing to take risk. In what ways? They told me I have an unlimited guest list. They said the goal. They, really? They said the goal is to get people in here. Their goal, because the goal is to get people in here. Because, one, they wanted to look good on camera. Mm-hmm. So, Trish, who, like, first of all, we had 90 pre-sales mm-hmm. because they're... Their promotion is flawless. They're not spamming Instagram. Mm-hmm. They're uh they pay for uh they pay for ad space mm-hmm. on Facebook on all my socials. We did a collab uh, uh sponsor ads. Yeah. Um, a collab um, sponsored ad is crazy. Yeah, colla- sound, collab- I didn't think about that. Yeah. That you could collab with someone. So yeah. Advertise. Look, for promoters sure. yeah. or even artists that have connections with promoters. Yeah. This is the kind of shit that we wanted to start this podcast about, yeah. and I want you to dig dig deeper into it. But yeah. The fact that you could collaborate mm-hmm. with the promotion company yep. gives them exactly what they're mm-hmm. expecting from you, but it yep. also puts the pressure on them and their ability to promote. Exactly, it's in your fucking name. Exactly, you're a promoter. Yeah, for sure. You're, you're, you're not a. You're not a. You're not a. You're not artist outreach. Mm-hmm. Even though that's part of one of the things yeah. you do, you're a fucking promoter. You're a promoter that has the audacity to come at the end of the night after your main course of this plate mm-hmm. has done their job, mm-hmm. done it well. Because yeah. when you do your shows. Yep. You go all the way in and do your shows. Yeah. You gonna turn around and tell me, "Oh man, it's all we got tonight." No, 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 no. Your problems is your problems. I did what I was supposed to do. I did what I was supposed to do. But I think that's super dope. What Underground Hip Hop did with you and that they have a collab post that not only is going to reach new people, but it's also going to reactivate people within your own audience who may or may not have come across that post. And not only that, like. Like I said, they're willing to take risk on top of they're not money driven. They're like, mm. they're like, we're going to make our money some way, somehow, whether yeah. it be at the bar because they sell merch, too. That's like right. they, yeah, they, yeah. they, they are, they are looking for that person to walk into that show and be like, damn, it, it's cracking in here. Yeah. The person don't give a damn how to pe- the uh, a, a fan don't care how <laughs> people got in. Nobody walking around talking about some. Did you get here on a pre-sale or not? Like, they, did, they, you, did you get here nah. because you're part of the guest list? No, Bro. you're here. They my first head that was my first headline show in LA like that was so organized and when I pulled up I had a line around the shit and that was the first time that was the first time that's ever happened in my career really I swear imagine that the, that was the, the first the, time the, it, first of all congratulations yeah bro. hell yeah that, that's that's we gotta make sure we give yeah. them the roses for that but yeah. like think about the time we're living in mm-hmm. the people that are winning yeah. 
The people that are winning are thinking outside the box. The people that are winning, even as companies, as businesses, are people who are thinking outside the box in yeah. a literal and figurative sense. Yeah. But with them being, with them understanding the 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 necessity for optics first. Mm -hmm. Let's get this shit looking like it. Yes. Because if it looks like it, it yeah. will bring other people. People mm -hmm. will get on their stories and start showing like, damn, it's cracking it's in here. Cracking like, like y'all yeah. missed out on this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is so much more valuable than hoping that the the artist spams their account 1,500 yeah. times. And then here's the problem I always have, and it's yeah. not just with promoters. I got the same problem with, av with a sponsored post. Yeah. So you want me to break an action. Mm-hmm. What's already worked with my my audience? Yeah. What's already worked with the algorithm? Because I'm yeah. my numbers are growing. Mm -hmm. You want me to stop my action, my motion, mm -hmm. to bring you into the fold and introduce mm -hmm. your product to them? Yeah. And you want to pay me a fee one time, mm -hmm. and have this thing live on my pro on my page forever? Yeah. There's no ceiling to how much yeah. money you can make. No, straight up. So when I think about a promotion company, I'm like, am I promoting the show or am I promoting your company? Right. And if there's no transparency on what your expectations yeah. are, then you get disappointment in yeah. it. And we're all disappointed yeah. because we didn't have the same goal. It should be at the end of the day. How do we get these people who don't got to come out and spend their money? Like you said, they got to pay for the parking. They got to pay for the drinks, mm. the food, all of that other shit. Maybe you got to pay somebody else's mm. way into there. Yeah. You're competing with, you're no longer competing with, you're no longer competing with just getting people to a show. You're competing yeah. with Netflix. Yeah. You're competing with pillows, yeah. beds yeah. that keep people home, yeah. pajamas, yeah. crazy work shifts. Yeah. Your girl that's probably nagging you to go out with your boys at night. Come on, man. Bro, you competing with other events in the city. Like, I, that's why I be like, that. you got to look at it. That's why it's a good thing for a promoter to have a really good relationship with the artist that they're booking. Because mm -hmm. uh, the artist needs to be in communication with the promoter like, look, hey. Um, I don't want to charge twenty dollars at the door. Mm. Also, I'll drop my price a little bit, so you not really, so you you not really like losing nothing in right, case this right. shit don't go right. Let's charge ten dollars. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Give me a guest list of like 10, 15 people. I guarantee 15, 10 people in the door that's buying drinks and hanging out and all of that shit. You're not going to hang out for five hours or someplace you, and not buy something. You feel what I'm saying? Let's get together. Let's maybe do some video promo, throw it up on a sponsor ass shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Let's not spam. Let's do different type of promo ideas yeah. other than just the flyer. We got you know what I mean? We got to. We got, we you got to have a really good relationship with the, with the artists and the promoters. Like. But that's why I go back to this whole grading system, and I hope yeah. somebody takes that and runs with it because it would be super dope to see. I don't know where I had this. I think I had this vision when I went mm -hmm. to one venue, and the bathroom was shitty. Oh my god, I hate venues and bathrooms. Venues. I, I know you in general. Yeah. You you like low key. You like low key a germaphobe. You oh, don't, folks don't know that. God. I know you oh, well, but I know god. you like low key. Yeah. Uh, but, oh god. But with it, but when you have a venue with a shitty bathroom, you might be asking, well, how how can that affect what you're doing? Just don't go to the bathroom, oh, fam. If you bring your fans out there, well, come on, and they like you rock shows like this. Come on, it's think an about effect. the women, the forget, women. Forget the dudes. Forget think the, about the women. Yeah. They go in there and they seeing like somebody ain't been cleaning the bathrooms on a regular yeah. basis. Believe it or not, that can be the difference between somebody staying until the end of your set mm -hmm. or watching two songs and being like, "Yo, I'm Yo, gonna I gotta you. go." Just because this girl gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> Come on, bro. I can't tell you how many times I've left a place, not necessarily a concert, but left somewhere because wifey had to go to a clean bathroom. Yep. That yep. that has happened so many times. Yep. So like you like like you said, you in you are in competition with a lot of factors that you mm -hmm. may not even be aware of. You may think it's all about the way that you promoted it. And and, and when you get promoters who don't understand it, yeah. to me they're the biggest headaches because they come to you like like you did something wrong. Yeah. And it's like, no. You hedge your bets based upon what your optics was of what yeah. I'm doing, and I'm doing it well because I'm obviously making a living for yeah. myself. Yeah. You said, I think we can make some money with him. Let's bring him into the scenario. Yeah. You just didn't take into consideration maybe this is not my highest volume area. Yeah. You took into consideration that this city may not be the one yeah. that I do the best in. Yeah. Have you even asked me? Yeah. Do you have other venues? Yeah. Have you even thought about the parking situation and how mm -hmm. that may mm -hmm. be a reason that nobody goes to any mm -hmm. of your shows? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about the 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 bathroom situation? Have you mm -hmm. thought about like I, I almost feel like the dude from uh from Bar Rescue? Yeah. Like, look at this fucking menu. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah. <laughs> that Bar Rescue guy be getting on <laughs> it's John that Taffer. Ass. Shout out to John yeah, Taffer, yeah, bro. But all of these factors matter, and not to just throw a blame around, but I think yeah. that. It's also part of our responsibility as yeah. artists to be like, I I know I don't do this and I should do this, but like go scout these venues before I go and say yes. 
Oh man, straight up. That is a very good idea. That is a very fucking good idea. Just show up on a random night. See and what another shit looking like. Another thing that a lot of people promoters don't take into consideration is the time frame in which you promote a show. I like What to do you be, mean? I like to promote a show like 2 months away cuz it two gives 2 months. Oh, that's because good. Because it gives a person time to plan for it. Like okay. sometimes like uh, somebody be like, okay, let's throw this show Wooty Wooty Whoop, and then they trying to throw it uh two three Fridays from now. It's like, bro, <laughs> nigga, niggas n- organized motherfuckers. Yeah. You may not be an organized motherfucker, but there are motherfuckers in my fan base that are very organized about their week. They got kids. They got kids. They got to find sitters. They have jobs. Yeah. Nigga, sometimes the day of, the day of the week is one of the biggest factors. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like. Fridays and Saturdays are the best days to throw shows. Everybody know that. Mm-hmm. Sundays are a little iffy, but it could work. We seen Noah James get successful off doing it. Yeah. But like, uh, you know, niggas got work on Monday. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So like, it's it's all the shit you got to be taking into consideration to throw a show. Even like, if you, people don't think about this, but I'm like, you you brought up earlier. Imagine mm-hmm. doing something during Grammy week. Oh, come and, on. And and could be, and I've seen it happen, bro. And this is in no way no disrespect to Pac Div, yeah. but I saw Pac Div rock a show, and I couldn't believe how close I was to the stage. They were like one of the biggest names in the city. Yeah. But somebody booked them during Grammy week, yeah. and I remember just looking around. I'm like, it's this one drunk girl who's dancing all. I mean, she don't know the songs. Yeah. And I'm like, I, this is it, Pac Div. It was almost awkward, bro, because yeah. it was to the point where I was like, so I was like. Like I want to show, show, but she was like, "You the only one in the room, damn yeah, near." Yeah, it was yeah. people in there, but it was like the Hollywood shit where folks on the back of the, uh, the venue yeah, don't really want to show no love. Like, oh yeah, that I, I know shit. who they is, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I, but I couldn't believe it, and I remember I just at, at some point just did the hip hop hands, and I was yeah. like showing love. But when you see that, you recognize like that's not all on the artists. No, nah. the promoter got to know what's in the city and what's going on. Yeah. Because Very these aware. things will hinder your ability to be successful that night. Bro, and then you put it on the artist like, well, I ain't booking him again, but like, bro, <laughs> come on, bro. And then it, it's fucked up because like, like then you start telling other promoters that shit like, oh, yeah, no, nah, Trey's not good. Man. His, his name not good. It's yeah. like, nah. But then like with the underground hip hop shit, like it was like. I made sure to capture that moment. I made sure it was recorded. I made sure because I want you to see. Like, Talk a little bit about that, about yeah. the, the necessity for artists to capture when these nights do go well. Oh, my God, it's so important. Like, okay. even even the night uh, in Rivers, or in Upland, it was a little light. Yeah, yeah. I still made sure I captured it because it was people in there that brought, bought tickets. Mm-hmm. Um it was uh when I had when I was performing a certain song and they were singing the lyrics. That's mm-hmm. you got to capture that. Like mm-hmm. all of that shit is important because yeah, it's content. Sometimes you may have to cheat the camera a little bit. Yeah, and that's oh, okay. you know I didn't cheat the camera. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh we all the cra- do it. Crowd be hella thin and you start you start doing that zoom yeah, in on the video. Yeah, you gotta you gotta make it you gotta make it do what it do, baby. Yeah, yeah. What's content it? is king. You know what I'm For saying? Sure. You Spotify, gotta Spotify do it every day. Go ahead. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, for sure. You know what I mean. At the end of the day, bro, you promoting the, you promoting the business, yeah. which is yourself. You know what I mean. And you want to be able to capture them moments, whether it be photos, videos. You know, e- not even just shows. Like when you in the studio in your creative space. You know what I mean. You want to capture some of them moments, like yeah. bringing the fan. This is this is going into another conversation. You want to. It's real dope to be able to connect with your favorite artists. Facts. You know what I'm saying. Like one of the idea that I had. And I'll spin it back to you. An uh, idea that I had was a, 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 a producer of mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were thinking about, they had, you know, they had the 3D cameras and then, yeah. like, you put the goggles on and watch it. Yeah, yeah. Think about how dope this would be. Like, I drop a project, right? Okay. And let's just say it's an EP. Mm-hmm. And um, the footage comes with that. And, like, you could watch me record and, like, you know, watch me record every song that I did on the project. Wouldn't that be dope? Like you chilling, like you chilling with me, Triz. This episode one. Come on, you bro. You gotta chill, bro. Be, this this episode one, Triz. You gotta Come chill. On. We got more. We gotta do, bro. On, we bro. can't let it all out. Nah, what? No. what? That'll be ill, right? What's crazy? Be Ill. What's crazy is, is, is that um, I at the time that I first got my Oculus, the the metal yeah. Oculus Two or whatever, I was like, I seen somebody making like an EDM beat or whatever, yeah. and I was like, how crazy would it be when, instead of somebody saying, what is it like to make a beat? What yeah. if you could like put the camera around your neck yeah. and then I'm making a beat. You see the screen, everything yeah. up there, but you're able to like look around the room, yeah. see the instance on this side yeah, and all this. Yeah. But I, I feel like that's something that 
it shouldn't be one singular person doing it. That right. should be that's that should be the new experience. Yeah, because that VR experience, bro. Because that right there, like I've bro, I've watched shows. Um, so meta 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 world or whatever you want to call mm. it has its own space where you can go watch concerts. For instance, I've mm. never seen um, uh, Billy Eilish ever. I have, mm. Like I, I would have, be look weird to be going to a Billy Eilish show by myself. But they have this thing where you can literally. You're in a hotel, right? Mm-hmm. You got your little avatar, your, your little mm-hmm. fake avatar. Mm-hmm. You dress yourself up and you walk out the door because you got tickets to go see her. Mm-hmm. You walk in this little area down where it's like people like fans of these different places. Mm-hmm. Here's one door that's like, go see uh, uh, J. Cole. Mm-hmm. In this room, go see uh, this DJ, DJ mm-hmm. whoever. And then another room, Billy Ola. I'm like, I want to see what the Billy Ola show looked like because mm-hmm. when she was buzzing. I walked in there, bro. You literally are sitting with a 3D camera sitting right above, right below her foot. Yeah. Oh, so you get to like see like you looking at the, the pyro text. You are yeah. looking at like other fans that are sitting next to you, and you're able to talk to them. That's ill. In the meta meta quest, right? That's crazy. Same thing with the NBA, right? Oh yeah. I don't that's... know if we want to talk about NBA today. Yeah. You know, you know, <laughs> both, both, both your Rockets and my Lakers know, need to need to do some yeah, things. But I was nasty. watching. I was watching highlights Whoa. where I was literally at the at the coach's foot. That's. And yeah. I'm just like, this is how tall these niggas are. <laughs> this shit is That's wild. Crazy. So when bringing that idea full yeah. full circle, I really do think that these are going to be the kind of things that we can put paywalls behind. Yeah. And also, this shit should be expected of a fan in 2023, 2024. Yeah. Why can't I come see you record from your perspective? That would be super sick. We got Google. We got Google go- goggles. Yeah. Google goggles. Like we yeah. got goggles by Google. Why yeah. can't I see that? That'll be that'll be a dope ass experience. That's so tight. That needs to happen. That needs For to sure. happen. Yeah. That needs to happen. So we we we, we kind of we kind of we kind of mashed a whole whole bunch of uh, notes. I think the folks in here like it. Uh, is there anything that that I want to kind of see what the, what everybody been talking about here? Because uh, the comments have been going kind of crazy in mm, general. Yeah. But uh, the Google where you could put your phone in that would do it. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. Not you having Steve Harvey, the drunk <laughs> Steve Harvey AI. Um. Uh, some promoters are infamous for having shows that get shot up too. Fans recognize <laughs> yeah, that. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Fights, all that shit. Yeah, you don't ever want to yeah. go somewhere where it's like you may I may not make it out. Shout, yeah. out <laughs> shout out to Khalid. He said the assumption is that they'd lose their license because the people fighting are doing it because they're drinking, not the other parts that go along with the, hood, hood activities. Hood activities. Shout out I like to, that. Because because Khalid was out there in his shows with us, yeah. performing and DJing. So shout out to him. Yeah. Ah uh, man, so th- there was something I feel like I might have like jumped the gun and and we got into a whole other topic, but I really want to talk about this idea of the value of a real fan to an yeah. independent artist because I think there's there's <laughs> okay I'm about to pull I'm about to pull this shit back up I'm, 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 damn what nobody got to say hold on let, let them let them delete this shit again I posted on something before you came here yeah uh, shout out to the homie Daylight he sent this over to me but not this <laughs> shit. <laughs> 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 but this right here. I let me let me go ahead and mute this. Oh, uh, I seen. You seen, I've seen so this. I don't think this is an actual. I mean, she put this on the screen. I don't think it's an actual stream farm, even though it looks like one. I think this is a, like an art display. You but don't my think thing that's is, happening right there. I think that's happening in real life for yeah. sure. But I think this actual video we're watching. I don't yeah. think that's a stream farm. I think this no. is somebody doing like some kind of an art display. Because I see, like, why in the hell would they let people just who? Like when you see people on the side, I'm like, yeah. nah, somebody wrote that. But yeah, for sure. The narrative definitely helps for what we're talking about. <laughs> for sure. If you want to push some propaganda, we could definitely do that. So I put up this post today, and I was like, I said, in the SpongeBob voice, I was like, damn, I'm getting hella, I'm getting hella streams. My yeah. stream's going crazy right now. And yeah. look at this shit. Look at this shit. Could you imagine? I ain't gotta imagine. I see people do it every day. They sit up here off of. 400, and that was the reason why uh, Daylight sent this to me, is that I sent him a meme of somebody talking about an artist that only sold a certain amount, even though they've been on every single blog and all of this, mm. and he's like, this is why, <laughs> and he sent me this. No, straight up. <laughs> but think about that for a second. This scene, because it's like art on the wall, this could be yeah. an art display, but the idea of streaming farms is not nothing new. You were telling yeah. me that you saw a video of some dude that was kind of like oh, bragging about bra- this shit. Oh, yeah, so I was watching... This um this video on YouTube that came across not YouTube uh, Instagram that mm-hmm. came across my feed and this guy was like basically telling the world how he fucking you know fakes his streams and like how he makes twenty thousand dollars a month doing it and it's just like what what world are we in like that do that's y'all, not do tight. y'all like music 
Man, like, what the, the fuck? But, do you uh, not want an authentic fan? What is that, Trish? What are you in it for? Fucking boomer. What you in it for, Trish, man? you sound like a boomer, bro. No, I sound like shit, one bro. of the OGs out I don't here. think of that, bro. You know what? They don't, don't know. They don't care about no fans out here, bro. I want to be able to walk out into an arena one day and niggas... An yeah. arena? Come on, bro. Bro, jump on jump on the MetaQuest. You can go to whatever arena you want to no. go to. I want all. I want. I want to touch and feel my people. <sighs> touch and feel. He, mm-hmm. He's in. He's into real experiences. They yeah, they're, you, not, they're gonna have a name for you in a year. Oh, humanoid. Yeah, on the real. <laughs> yeah, just because I want to experience the real, the real deal. Everything is so digital right now. It's like uh, it's nasty. It's good and it's nasty at the same time because there are tools. I feel like especially AI based that can oh, really, man. really help move the needle. It's shit that yeah. I'm doing. I'm like, the steps are so much easier. Yeah, some AI shit is a. Uh, I agree with AI to a certain extent. I don't think I don't think we need to be AI in each other. I don't think I'm not trying to hear AI Tupac and shit. I'm nah, not trying to hear that. Nah, nah. Like you're never gonna get. You're never going to be able to... Uh, AI is never going to be able to do what... Be as authentic as a person. That, that'll that never happen. Right. Impossible. What, even if you can duplicate, which I think is what they're banking on right now, it's yeah. not, It's not what they say, all sentient. It's not all thinking for itself at this moment, yeah. at least not the public version of it. But my question is, that session that you had, Triz, mm-hmm. where you heard a beat mm-hmm. and somebody walked in and said something silly mm-hmm. and you said... Ah! You said something in a certain way you never said it, and that became an ad lib on a hook. Oh yeah, for sure. How do you duplicate that randomness? You can't. Like you're the you, you are the prompt yeah. that they're inspired by, right? You, you because of you, a prompt yeah. is generated. Yeah. But when you duplicate moments like that, where it's like I've had moments where because I had a shitty day, mm-hmm. I made a fire beat. Oh yeah, for sure. How can you emulate what parts of that shitty day contributed to that? You can copy the end result. You can copy that, but you can never copy emotion. Oh man. You know what I mean? You can't copy you can't copy first of all, you never you don't know how I'm feeling. Can't no computer tell you how I'm feeling. <laughs> I, straight up. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like, I could tell you all day long that I'm not irritated, but it's probably just because I don't want to talk about my day with you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, And what but, do you mean when you say you're, like, you're not irritated? It has been times when my wife done told me, like, mm-hmm. uh, today's just been annoying. And not knowing, like, are you just hungry, huh? Yeah, on the real. Like, you, what, what should I go get? Then? Yeah. Like, like it, I, I'm thinking it could be something extreme, like, oh, shit, like, maybe something happened with this and this yeah. and that. But it's like, no. I think there's certain parts of this that, that I think we're over- we're overestimating and underestimating yeah. at the same time with AI. But right now I look at it and I'm like, to me, this is the solution to how people used to say, oh, you can't do this shit without a team. Mm-hmm. By the way, what does your team look like? Um, I have, have a team. What does it look like? Yeah, I have a PR. Shout out to Cammie Johnson. She does a very good job at, uh, you know, getting me in certain doors that I probably wouldn't be in on my own. Word. Um, I have a manager. His uh, Doe Networks. A uh, really good guy. He also manages TF. Um, oh, I know uh, you had the same manager. Okay, yeah, word. we got the same manager. Fire. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, my my distribution label, Below System Records, who distributes mm-hmm. the majority of my music. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, I finally have like a team. Oh, yeah. and I'm assigned uh, to Breakpoint Booking Agency, which with like Rome Streets, Boldy James. Sheesh. Yeah, so I I definitely have um. You know, a team now. Yeah, yeah. How I does, just don't how, have a security guard, but <laughs> yeah, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah. But I feel like it's crazy because when I seen, I went to your last show, I seen the way you rolled up, and I was like, I love the fact that Triz cares about the details. Oh, for sure. Pulled up in a car I'd never seen before. Yeah, <laughs> no, man. pulled up right in the front. Yeah. What kind of car is it? It was a, uh, it was a Cadillac. I believe it was a Cadillac. It yeah, was a real it was, deal Cadillac. Switches, yeah, hitting the switches in the parking lot. It's like yeah. it's all a part of my image. Yeah, yeah. It's like nah, when you when I pull up, you are gonna see the West Coast shit. You are gonna see me get out and yeah. What's crazy is that you know when when you say image, I think some people may get like some people get it. Mm-hmm. I get it, mm-hmm. but some people may listen to that and say like, well, I thought the whole thing about being an independent was being authentic about it, and it's like, yeah, but also too, we're entertainers, we're performers. Yeah. And we have a responsibility yeah. to, if 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 you if you go to a show and it's funny because we did a video, the homie Jake Asai came, we were reacting to a video where the guy was giving tips about how to do a better live show, yeah. and one of the things he said was, you know, stop dressing in too dark a clothing or have something that at least pops out mm-hmm. because it's like you blend in with the background, mm-hmm. you blend in with the crowd, yeah. And when people see you 
after listening to you, they've got this mm-hmm. whole vision of what what it's gonna yeah. be like to meet Trez. Yeah, yeah. And not that you, not that it's bad to be yeah. regular. Yeah. But if it's too regular, it's forgettable. It's forgettable. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like so, like I had that planned out. I was like, I don't care who's gonna be there, who's in the parking lot. This is mm-hmm. how I'm pulling up. You feel yeah, me? And yeah. it's like, I because I want you to, when you see me, I want you to know like. My songs that you hearing is yeah. that's who I am. Mm-hmm. Like it, it is authentically mm-hmm. me. I am West Coast. I do, you know, I, I do ride around with the homies and low riders, and I do wear. I still wear, you know what I mean. Uh, I still wear Chuck sometimes. I got on Vans and yeah, shit. Like yeah. I'm authentically Which is still Cal- West Coast. Of the yeah, yeah, I'm authentically <laughs> California. So like when you see me and you know what I mean, I, I, I'm not putting on a, a front, yeah. but I'm gonna. I'm gonna wear myself to the fullest extent, mm-hmm. especially if I'm somewhere at like a show or an event. Funny how nobody questions mm. when somebody has to wear a uniform when they work at Chipotle. No, oh, right. That's your job. <laughs> That's your job. That's your fucking job. That's your job. I'm a representation of the organization that I'm representing, and I'm representing Triz. This is the car we drive. The Geek Squad has a car. The, the Geek Squad. How the hell? <laughs> the, the Geek, Geek Squad, Squad have a car, a but car. you want a rapper to, 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 to slum it out. Come on. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, real chop. Geek Squad got yeah. the, it, it should say on this. I don't know if I could ever drive a car. Yeah. You got to pay me a whole lot of good money. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm driving a, on the real life. I'll be, I'll be the one in the Geek Squad vehicle pulling up to you. No on disrespect to anybody who worked for the Geek Squad. You know what I'm saying? No disrespect. No like disrespect. on the uh, the L.A. show I had, I'm like, damn, we in Hollywood. It's my L.A. headline show. And then I told my homie. And nigga, he ended up getting the, um, he signed the Ethica. Shout out Paperboy Casino. He ended up getting mm-hmm. us a, a a, a, a Maybach and a, a, and, a, and, a and a Escalade to pull up in. You know what I mean? Man, so uh, Ethica took care of that. And I think about that, bro. And I'm like, that's so dope because yeah. if we are performing at shows where there's a high likelihood that there's other folks who aspire to do what we do mm-hmm. in the audience, yeah, they should see that. They should see that. Yeah, for sure. right. Part of the conversations I've been having with the homie Steve, we've been talking a whole lot lately. But one of the conversations I had with him, I said there was a time period where. In hip hop, mm-hmm. if you were an underground artist or even considered an independent artist, mm-hmm. it was almost to your advantage to not look too shiny. Yeah, for sure. To not look like you're making a whole lot of money because it's like, oh no, you really about the craft and all of that. Yeah, but then I'm over that. And then you meet you meet those folks <laughs> later so on. They like, that. I really wish I would have just <laughs> um, took care of my business. Yeah, like I'm, I got. I got so over that whole like real hip hop shit. Do it for the love. Fuck that. I'm not. I'm trying to get a bag, nigga. I, I, I Look, need bread, nigga. And you sh- and shit. And I and I feel like it's very convenient that that whole ideology of do it for the love gets pushed so aggressively on hip hop artists. Yeah. Because then, to me, when I hear somebody say that, I gotta look. I gotta look at you different. Because yeah. when you tell me to do it for the love, I think yeah. it's under the assumption that you don't think that I love it first. Yeah. And it's under the assumption that you think that love means being broke. That and that and that to me what made that's what made me stop thinking like that. Mm. I'm like a, a lot of a lot of a lot of y'all are wearing that because you don't have the money. Shit. And you're trying to use that as a cover up like you like yeah. you do want those Jordans, nigga. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Straight stop up talking and, to me like that. Yeah, stop talking like, to me like you don't want this shit. Yeah, you you do know it for that, the love, bro. Yeah, like it, it's a difference between like it's a difference between like a Bill Gates or uh what's that nigga that run Facebook? Uh, uh Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, they tried to mm-hmm. say like he he always wears these shirts, the same shirt, the same yeah, shirts yeah. or whatever. But it's like we know he runs Facebook though, <laughs> nigga. <laughs> So like, why are we giving them extra cookie points the, for wearing the same shirt? Yeah, so good for nigga, you. Good for good him, for you. nigga. But when I'm walking around, I'm not Mark Zuckerberg, nigga. I'm not. I, when, if you wore the same blue shirt every time you had a show, these niggas would call you musty. Come on, these bro. Niggas would look at that bacon collar. You come could wear on, new bro. shirts every time. Like, I seen this nigga. I seen this nigga wearing this shit on a, on a stream on, earlier bro. today. This nigga ain't even putting on deodorant on. Bro. It would be on your head, bro. I stopped. I stopped doing that, nigga. <laughs> Whenever I got a show, nigga, I go. I probably go buy me some brand new shoes, that nigga. Part. I go get me. I, I I go do it up a little bit. So I, yeah. the, the point I was gonna make is that I was talking to, to, to Stevie, and I'm he's another independent artist, and I definitely want to talk to him again at some point on here. But yeah. uh, I, I told him I said, bro, and not that he was fighting this, but I was like, you know, our generation of independents cannot afford to look broke. Yeah. yeah. Like even if it's even if we're still working on something, we're building and we're mm-hmm. reinvested, we mm-hmm. cannot can't afford it because we can't we we cannot. First of all, I think that our fan base will start to look at us because I feel like 
hip hop yeah. fan bases are becoming <laughs> a lot more smarter, a lot smarter about yeah. who they're giving their money to because money ain't what it was before, right? Inflation, all this other shit going on. It's like, dog, why is it I keep supporting your money, your CDs, and your ass is always broke? Yeah. <laughs> at some point, at some point, fuck all that doing it for the love shit. What are you doing with the like, money bro, that I keep giving you? Like, bro, dog. Why do I keep supporting nah, you? Like, you gonna see, you gonna you got see. got bad money management. On the real, what, <laughs> nigga? Like, no, nah, I, I remember I used to pride myself, like, in collecting vans, and I used to tell people, like, mm-hmm. nigga, you know what I mean? Like, it don't cost much to look fresh. Mm-hmm, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, you can go get you some fresh Air Force Ones, all black, all white, or whatever, that, that $100. Part, that part. You niggas be buying weed. Y'all niggas going out to eat. Y'all niggas, like, <laughs> invest in your wardrobe, too. Nigga, yeah, yeah. keep them bitches clean. Don't wear them shits to the store, nigga. Yeah. Put them shits up. Those are your work shoes. Those are your work shoes. <laughs> Those is your work shoes. Any other situation, nah. people going to be... Any other situation, Triz, yeah. that's why I'm so glad we're doing this, and this is episode yeah. one, but it's so any other situation, people are justifying, like, no, yeah. no, no, like... No, like, 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 keep it, keep it hip hop. And I'm like, do you think hip hop <laughs> means that? dusty? Do you think hip hop means broke? Because if that's what you think it is, bro. to me, I got a question, especially when it's somebody that I feel like is culturally a guest within this, mm-hmm. right? When you're telling somebody that they, they should purposely do this and it's like, but you're not doing that. Right. But you're you not... looking at me as the artist like, oh, yeah. you, I just feel like you're not relatable because you're not listening to the music, first of yeah, all. You're, you're, listening to, you're listening to what you see. Yeah. And that's not how you listen. <laughs> yeah, no. All that, all that, like, is, like I said, bro, it's the mass, the fact that you ain't got it yet. But, like, it's yeah. okay to want that. You know what I mean? But don't be out here trying to, like, uh, basically, what's that word I'm looking for? Basically put on this front like you don't give a fuck because you care. You do. You care, bro. You do. You Absolutely. care about how you look, bro. Come on, nigga. Don't. And then, like, the, come on, y'all don't. Go, I don't like women. Come on, bro. Like, <laughs> we didn't bring that up. You like, especially as married like, men, nigga, but it's, it's a factor. It's it a is fact. a fact. It's a fact. Like, it's man, fact. yeah. I, I like getting complimented on my clothes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, this is a good tip for people who um, want to look expensive or buy expensive shit. I thrift shop a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, I have no shame in that. That's DIY you know, like a motherfucker. What you about to say, that you know my whole shit, with, especially when I was going bro. through my baby Sinbad phase, yeah. every one of them shirts was thrift shop. Come on, bro. I found, my, my <laughs> bro, I found a, a, a Tracy McGrady uh, Raptors jersey at a thrift store. Stop. Authentic. Stop. Authentic had the tag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good on condition, point. on point. What, nigga? I wore that shit in a video and I took pictures in it. As you should. Yeah, nigga. Come on, bro. You got to <laughs> you got to really be you got to be strategic with it. Yeah. I didn't I I didn't have it that much, so I was like, shit, I'm finna still look fly. I'm finna go to mm-hmm. these thrift stores. I'm finna And I love thrifting now. It's like yeah. a thing, you know what I mean? Depending on what area you go to. Yeah, you might find bro, some shit. You get some gems. You like, might find some shit. You know, my, my mom yeah. was telling me like the prices are going up at some of these yeah. places cuz obviously with inflation and everything, yeah. but fam like yeah. you also have the responsibility of not only looking f- looking yeah. and for those who don't understand the terminology because i know i have a very broad audience like yeah. the same way you have to look presentable at work yeah. we have to look presentable at work as yeah, well right up, you gotta you, look presentable you can't have you you imagine Y'all know you 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 work with somebody, especially if you worked in food. Oh my god, if you yeah. worked in food, <laughs> yeah. you got the one person, your coworker, that came in there and they already smelled like last night food. Oh my god! <laughs> so wait a minute, you didn't even clean that apron. You smell like turkey ranch and Swiss from Saturday. Bro, I'm telling you. What you bro. and you and they, and they like they want to. I'm telling you. Hey, bro, I want to ask you a question. Put your arms <laughs> down. Put your arms, put your arms down. <laughs> Hey. First of all, put your arms down talking hey. to me with all of this stink hey. right now. Bro. But, but it, it's it, it, it's it's expected when you're in a professional environment, but I think a lot of the things is kind of the unprofessional nature, I think, mm. of uh, people expect of hip-hop, and I feel like we're part of the, the era of artists, independent artists that are changing those optics because yeah. it has to be that way. Yeah, bro. You definitely had. I mean, I... Look at like Alchemist and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been around Alchemist a gang of times. I always see him in the flyer shit. That nigga's yeah. pulling up in a, a Rolls Royce or a, a Bentley or something like that. And he's all the way hip hop. Yeah. Oh, you, did, you, know, you know, how much hip hop you need? Come how on, much hip hop can you, you mean from to, Alchemist? You mean to tell me when he got his bag, he was going to stay in a Honda? <laughs> Fuck out of here. Nigga, I'm going to go get me some fly shit. How come it's, I ain't trying to hear none right, of that. Nigga, some of the biggest backpack <laughs> rappers got got some shit. Yeah, you feel me? And, and and I think we need to see that. Yeah. Because if 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 
if we limit the ceiling on what we can do, it's not just it's not just about how much money you can pocket for yourself and your mm-hmm. family. Even though for a lot of people that is, and I'm not yeah. judging it, but it's also for the fact that if you don't do well out here, that could compromise <laughs> the ability of the next generation after yeah, you. Yeah. Because if they're looking at you and saying the ceiling is only like you said, and, and not to say that it's yeah. not okay to have it at one point, mm-hmm. but if the ceiling is just the Honda, if the ceiling is just yeah. scuffed up shoes, it's yeah, like nah. That's cool for yeah. a little bit, but after yeah. a certain point, you're looking at somebody, and I, I said, I hate to make this about age, but I have to do it. Yeah. To where it's like, first of all, I'm 38. Mm-hmm. If you see me at 38, mm-hmm. and I have not figured out how to clean my shoes. Come on, bro. I have not figured out hygiene. Oh I'm in your breath, God. and my, I'm in your face, and my breath is on is stinking, right? I'm bro. talking to a fan, and I'm, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I appreciate the support. All Using a H bunch words. of vowels. All H words. <laughs> words. Nigga, like, chill, At some bro. point, you're going to look at me like, forget the rapping. Forget the talent. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay, for sure, love. Thank you for yeah. the heads up. Um, at, at some point, like, you're going to look at me like a grown man, like a 38, yeah, like, like, this is a grown-ass man, bro. I don't care how, how tight you is at your, at your craft. Like, you, bro, bro you, so ain't heard, many. you ain't heard of deodorant? Bro, I be trying to tell people, <laughs> like, one of the things that uh, people uh, notice about me is, like, they rarely see me without my haircut. Mm. That's a fact. That, that's one of the things that's why they that I pride see me myself my on. That's why, that's, <laughs> <laughs> like, I this this haircut is, I think, like, three or four days old. I, I got my haircut, like, on Thursday, but I pride myself in, yeah. if, if it's tricky, you're not going to know it's tricky. You're not going to, you're not... <laughs> You if, got them clippers at the house yeah, in case you got to edge up yourself. You yeah, feel yeah. me? If, yeah, yeah. It, if if the money not right, you not going to know it. I'm going to at least have on my Jordan shorts with my mm-hmm. white tee and my socks and flip-flops even mm-hmm. when I go to the store. Got to. J- just in case I bump into somebody. Because it happens all the you time. You feel me? The I, days that you decide not to. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, what? I'm just going to pull up to this subway real quick. Yeah, nobody ain't nobody going to know me. In Is that Tris? <laughs> like, what the <laughs> hell? Like, no. Nah. Hey, what, hey, what you driving? Oh uh, yeah, no. Oh, what's up with the set? What, oh, my boy? You you need yeah, some money? You feel me, bro? You can go, <laughs> you can go to Ross. You can get, you can get the polo draws, the polo socks, yeah. and it's authentically polo, nigga, for a dub. Yeah, Come on, what, what are we doing? And and, and and part of our responsibility as independent artists, and I heard you speak to this a lot, is <sighs> we got to be good stewards of our money. Like we yeah. got to make sure that we are making wise decisions because mm. when you have a team, mm. you no longer are just. Forget a team When you have a significant other Yeah You got a wife Yeah That is like yeah. I'm willing to live a life That most women Who have like Nine to five dude Yeah They don't take the kind of hours we take Straight up It's real easy for us to be yeah. like Look I know we had these plans Yeah we, I gotta get in this session Cause Straight this up. session could be The kind of money we need At the end of the month No nah, facts For them to be like do what you gotta do. You know yeah. I trust you. You gotta let, let, go ahead and do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't have that relationship right, I don't think people recognize. I've been, with, I've had homies who've had toxic relationships that have messed up our opportunities to even work with each other. Yo, I'm already knowing. Forget making money. We can't I'm even link. Knowing. I'm already knowing. So, and me and my wife always had that understanding. I've always told her like, you can never get in the way of this. Yeah. As long as y'all have that. Like, yesterday, I missed my wife's uh, high school reunion. Oh wow! Because I was, I had already made an agreement with myself, and I was like, I'm going to this show in San Diego because I'm a network, and I'm, I ain't seen a homie. I'm, I'm about to go do some rap shit, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and like she understood that she didn't want, she didn't get mad or nothing. She was like, I'm yeah. just take the home girl. All right, for sure. So not to, not, and I, obviously I want to make sure that I respect the privacy because I think that's part of the big thing. Even me, yeah. like there was a part of me like my wife is like she don't want to want to be on camera and all these different yeah. things. A part of me that's like well, I, I want to show you off. I want to, yeah, 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 yeah. But I had to come to understand that that's probably one of the healthiest things that I could have done mm-hmm. or we could have decided on because. Uh, our business stays our business. Yep. So when things are going good or bad, you would never know. You would never know. None of y'all damn, none of y'all none being of your business. business yeah. But with that said, though, like everything from like, and I love both of y'all, man. I love yeah. both of y'all. And, and, and just when I see y'all both, your energy is even different. When she when, when she's there, I can see your energy, energy is different. Yeah. And, and like you you just seem like you feel with a whole, more lot, whole, whole lot more light. So yeah, 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 for sure. With that said, though, man, I, since we're on the conversation mm-hmm. of optics, I've always wanted to ask you, like, mm-hmm. what, was it always a conscious decision of especially as a West Coast artist to be like, nah, my wife is gonna stay in the forefront. Like mm-hmm. I'm not gonna give the illusion that I'm out here and I'm just single and because well, I feel like you always have like made her a part of the the picture. Yeah. Uh. Well, one, 
um, it's a part of my image too. Like it also, mm -hmm. it get it it it's gotten me a lot of women fans. Like it also it sells the music too. Like really, she's gotten me so many women fans. It's ridiculous. That's like, wild. Just yeah. like just like just me posting my wedding photos. Uh, me talking about experience, experiences, like I always say funny shit about her, like mm -hmm. online, and mm -hmm. like we joke back and forth. Like, I've gotten so many like people that didn't know who my music, didn't know my music before, mm -hmm. just based off them being invested off me and my wife being funny wow. online. You know what I'm saying? So like, that's huge. Like I started to do that because I was like, this is authentically me. I always tweet about what's going on in my life. And two, I'm ready for any criticism that comes my way like yeah. when it comes to my wife because I know that's also, I mean, we ain't Will and Jada out here. You feel me? <laughs> I, <think> but, <laughs> I, I, I pray nobody you know out here saying? like Will and Jada because, man, I... Y'all wouldn't see my black ass. Man, anymore. straight up. So like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk. I'm, I'm like, look, look at here. If, my, if Jada, my wife, yeah. I'm like, look at here. So I'm, all, I'm, all, I'm also <laughs> selling. I'm also that's also still that's a part, part of my product. Part of what's going on? It's still a part of my product. Yeah. And it's always been. It's so dope to see. I, see, I feel like you do so many things, Triz. That mm -hmm. I don't know if you always get that credit. Mm -hmm. Um, but I notice it, especially as somebody that sees it from a different point of view like you're trailblazing a lot of west coast rapper stereotypes oh, yeah. without having to do any silly shit no straight up and i feel like the things that you're doing are opening up opportunities for people to show more mm -hmm. parts of their life and they're gonna have to yeah if they're gonna make a successful career and doing what they're doing so many mm -hmm. folks man they're so worried about like i think as much as you were talking about like yeah. appearance sake we're talking about the same thing that's expected of us when we go to our job. So yeah. that I don't see nothing wrong with that. But there's an extreme version of it where it's like I'm yeah. faking everything from the top to the bottom. My relationship is this, da da da. But the fact that um, you're being transparent about the things that you are, I think mm. that changes the narrative for a lot of people. It changes the energy for a lot yeah. of people, and that's needed because, bro, you never know. Like, you get a sponsorship mm -hmm. because of y'all interaction. Straight up on some couple shit like. Wait, yep. what? Like, y'all yeah. want to pay how much for what? No, we got approached to, to do uh, some reality TV shit, and I was immediately like, she want, I was like, you know that'll never happen. That, no. I'll never no. be on the re And it was like some, uh, it was like one of those, like, uh, like dating, like, we separate each other for mm -hmm. a little bit, oh, and you see, nah. and you see, like the circle or something. Yeah, yeah, and you see uh, if the other one will break, like, nah, break temptation no. type shit. And I was like, I was like, girl, I will never, do, I, <laughs> I will never do a reality show. It, 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 my my problem is that that shit is for failed rappers. Damn, for sure. It's the really indie podcast. It's the really indie podcast, though. That shit is for failed rappers for sure. I want no pieces of it. I, I want if no that's gonna, If that's going, is employing a spouse a goal for y'all? Uh, I tried it. Like basically giving my wife a job and what I do, yeah. Uh, I definitely have tried it. I I I, yeah. I accept her input, but she'll never work for me. Yeah, I think that that's a dynamic that. I mean, because force like, it, it could be, it could be, it could be a, it could, it could like, potentially be bad based upon where y'all at yeah. in your relationship. Like so. she, she always comes to me like, "Oh, can I write out a video script for you?" And all that. Yeah, for sure. I'm not tripping on that, but I'll never be like, I'll never have her as like my manager and no shit like that. That Damn. just it that's just conflict and like we can get into an argument and she may not want to do something that day. Like no, nah, hell no. <laughs> Cyberpunk said tax write off. You yeah. may not get that, Bucko, if yeah. you get in the wrong argument, huh? Yeah, on the real. All yeah. of a sudden it's like Run off with your cheese. All of a sudden them, them <laughs> tweets ain't going off no more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, I'm cool. No, I, I think I think it's 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 dope to try, but I think it's also an important to recognize like yeah. as much as this is the center of our life, mm -hmm. like doing this. Yeah. They got they got dreams and goals that they want to accomplish as well. Like I'm glad yeah. that my wife did. Like she worked she worked for me for probably about I said like a month. And her seeing the inside of my business made her say, I think I want to start my own. Oh, word, word. And that's when she started doing like um uh first her makeup mm -hmm. business and then she got into the nail business. But it's like ever since then she's been yeah. doing entrepreneurial shit since yeah. then. So it's like maybe that was the walk that I had to go. Yeah, no, for sure. I'm a full time artist. Uh, we 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 getting good money wise, and this girl want to work at the damn subway. She ain't want no parts of any of this. And 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 you got you got to respect that because it's yeah. like maybe she loves that 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 interaction. Like Mike, for instance, uh, my wife, she hasn't had to work for the last 
two, three years, mm. and she misses <laughs> yeah. being around like homegirls yeah. and everybody and interacting because it's mostly yeah. like her and the, and, and the young one. So there's pros and cons of this then, independent living. And then with that, like she probably want her own money. That's a big thing too. Like a lot of a lot of these women want to be so independent, and they mm -hmm. I don't need no man. I don't know if that's y'all dynamic. No, no, nah, nah, that's she not. She probably not she that, probably yeah. just want her own check at the end of the week. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I want her to have that that, that confidence of if something happens to me, mm -hmm. she's she, she good, good to pick it up she and go right. Yeah, she and not just rely upon. Well, I hope he's left enough something behind. Like, yeah, nah. I think that's important to the to the confident aspect. But yeah, yeah, no, nah, like a lot of songs that I recorded. I know will never come out until I'm gone. Like you, mm. you also got to be understanding of the fact that, like, man, we not promised tomorrow. So, like, you always. That's why I record so much music. I also Damn. record for insurance. I want something like, God forbid, something happen to me. I want my wife to be like five albums tucked. You feel me? That's like, dope. all right, yeah, this is what Triz had planned, and this is what he. I don't know if this is the order, but yeah. she could talk to some of my homies. Like, this is how this nigga would have wanted to do it. Well, why? But my thing is this: maybe that's part of. I love that concept, bro. Mm -hmm. You gotta stop doing this, bro. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Let me, <laughs> yeah. Two things you said over the last two months yeah. that really had my brain going. Mm -hmm. Um. The first one was when you can't do numbers, stay consistent. Straight up. You told me that the last time you were mm -hmm. sitting there. Um, and the second one here now is creating this music is not only good for the catalog and good for the bottom line right now, mm -hmm. but creating all this music is is part of the insurance plan. It's part of the insurance plan, yeah, for sure. My question is, is there something that we could be doing that's more conscious of, I'm gonna start structuring these folders so mm -hmm. that by the time you get in here, all you gotta do is just let it go. Let it go, yeah, no, straight up. And and then a lot of people will be like, damn, that's kinda scary to do, but that's the same thing you're doing when you go sign up for a life insurance policy, or you start making your will, you start doing all of that it's shit. It's all scary. And it's it's life. We're not gonna be here forever. Man. So why not be like, all right, sure, look, babe, if such and such happened to me, this is the passwords to this shit. These mm -hmm. are the folders. This is what I want you to put out. Mm -hmm. I'm still good health. Everything's all good. Yeah. But just in but case. Just in case. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that's another thing about uh, independence is that mm -hmm. the very same thing that makes people, makes us valuable to people, mm -hmm. our accessibility could yeah. be the very same thing that in the yeah. wrong situations. Yeah. Like I'm, I, That's one thing I noticed about you is that I thought I was very super aware of my surroundings. You're mm -hmm. ultra aware of your mm -hmm, surroundings. And like sure. if and even like the fact of how you move with the amount of people that you have with you too. Mm -hmm. I, I feel like that's that's something that once again, not only do we have to be doing well, but we have to be here too. Yeah, straight up and down. Because if, if we're down. not here to be able to make the product, we're not able to do this like mm -hmm. yeah, what's what what, what good are we doing is it, it for? If we're talking about the things that I did Five years before something happened. Yeah, um, I think it's crucial, bro. But I yeah. look, man. I, I you know I know we could talk for 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 hours and hours on end. Yeah. Uh, anything else that you want to leave for for episode one? It's only one episode one, Tris. I know. First of all, I just want to say thanks for everybody that tuned in for yeah. episode one. This is the pilot episode, <laughs> and yeah. I mean we got the, we got some really good engagement. I hope y'all got some good gems. You feel me? I want to save a lot of topics for episode two. Yeah. And, uh, oh, so you still yeah. want to do it then? You still oh, want to do sure. it? Okay, okay. Well, sure. we, didn't ruin that. we didn't ruin that today. Okay. I'm loving it. All right, I'm good, loving good. it. Yeah, I'm loving it. <laughs> Tris be I'm dropping gems. It. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm loving it. So imagine what the music sound like. Hell yeah. Like, like I found myself, because I didn't know what your set list was going to be, but I found mm. myself revisiting your your, your catalog. Mm -hmm. Bro, same thing I told Stevie, I'm going to tell you. Mm. Listening to the way that y'all find your pocket mm -hmm. and that you said, this is what I'm going to put my flagpole in, mm -hmm. and I'm going to I'm going to claim this land right mm -hmm. here, and I'm going to keep producing music. Yeah, that shit gets me so inspired to where yeah. I'm like, I didn't come here to be just yeah. a content creator. Yeah, no, nah, for sure, for sure. I, and then like you do what's comfortable for you, man. Like, yeah, if it if if anything you do, and I don't care if it's taking pictures, I don't care if it's producing, I don't care if it's rapping. Mm -hmm. If it if any of it feels for, stop, stop, just stop it. Yeah, do what's comfortable. Nah. I, I like. I stopped trying to make a hit a long time ago. What's crazy about that? Mm -hmm. I listened to one of your projects where mm -hmm. you were leaning in on like like more R and B sounds, and I'm mm -hmm. like, he got about six hits in here already. That's what I'm saying. But you didn't, you wasn't focused nah, on. Nah, you don't focus. Uh, I'm not focusing on that. I, I just my goal now is just to keep creating, mm -hmm. and if it go, it go. Cause like yeah, the odds that. of you picking the hit. <laughs> 
are so slim. Do you, do you think about how ridiculous it is? How yeah. like, and, and to a certain degree, how narcissistic. Yeah. And I start, and this is when I start realizing how many people in the in the traditional music industry are very fucking narcissistic, and mm -hmm. that they have this idea. I know what the people want. Yeah. <laughs> don't hang around people because they're yeah. always in exclusive restaurants. Yeah, they're always yeah. in a VIP. They yeah. don't hang around people. They hang yeah. around their people. Exactly. I, I just know what the people want. I've yeah. been in this industry for 30 years, and I just know what they want. <laughs> and it's like that kind of arrogance, that kind of like, yeah. no. no. So what I love is the fact that you always stay you always have an understanding of like the long term play. My yeah. thing is this: I have this this philosophy. I call it the Aaliyah, the uh, uh, the Aaliyah, uh, what I call it, Aaliyah theory. Okay. And that she got a song called One in a Million. Yeah. I want to make a million songs before I'm dead. Fact. I'm never gonna reach that. Right. Never gonna reach that. Right. I know that. Right. But I'm ten xing the amount of songs that I'm probably gonna actually make. Yeah. I'm going to make a million songs. With that in mind. Not that I give less attention or that the song I'm working on is less valuable, mm -hmm. but I've told myself, this is one of a million. Mm -hmm. Chill. Yeah, straight up. Because we can over obsess yeah. over like the, you mm -hmm. know, perfectionism, but mm -hmm. it's like, fam, you're going to be here for a while. Yeah. This is a moment. It's like, imagine instead of mm. capturing the moment when you're with your family, you're like, no, 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 no. I got to get the composition right. I got to find the leading lines. I got to find the right mm -hmm. lighting. Just take the just, picture. Just take the picture. <laughs> just take the picture because so, <laughs> some of the some of the best pictures mm -hmm. were caught off guard. Those are the ones you end up using for documentaries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're gonna they're gonna ask for the the, the cameras that mm -hmm. your auntie didn't took mm -hmm. the picture your auntie didn't took because it's so much more valuable yeah. that it's like it's like a little bit of grain. It's yeah. like a little bit of like mm -hmm. like the film didn't really like mm -hmm. develop all the way. Yeah. Those are the kind of things we look for when we're yeah. trying to build up on our one story. One of the best pictures in hip hop is the one when uh. After Tupac got shot and he getting rolled into the uh, the ambulance and he flicking them off, oh, that was that. And it's not it, even super HD. It's, it's just so like, iconic because yeah. he's like, like I took that as like y'all can't stop me. Yeah, it so don't powerful, matter. Powerful, super yeah. powerful. Blood all on his hands. Super <laughs> morbid, but it was probably bandaged up and all. <laughs> like you're not going. And I'm going to court still. Yeah, and I'm still going to court. <laughs> and I'm finna come out and, and I'm finna drop all eyes on me and it's going and it's, and it's going platinum, nigga, du double platinum. Before I turn 25. Yeah, before I turn 25. Though. It's ridiculous, bro. Uh, uh, before we get up out of sure. here, did you see that argument? Uh, that was like, who was more iconic, Pac or Kanye? And I was, and this is what I was, this is what I was gonna say. Kanye may be more impactful, mm -hmm. but Tupac died at 25. What if Kanye died at 25? We we would have you feel me? we would have through the wire. May, may, maybe because no, I think it was 28 when he made through the wire. Did he? Uh, I think what, what was it? I'm trying uh, to figure out. How old, is, how old is he now? He's uh, that was 20. That was 20 years ago. Through the wire was 20 years ago. So he's what 48. I think he's like he was like 26. Kanye West is forty six now. He was twenty six when he when Through the Wire came out. Twenty six. Yeah, so, so we we're wouldn't just have got getting, it. We're just getting him as an artist. Exactly. Like and College Dropout is an amazing album. I was like, yeah. that's not an argument you can make. Though. You can't even you know do what that. Mean? You and, can't do that. And the it's fact, unfair. The fact that we're still comparing him to a man that hasn't been here for over twenty five plus that years. That right there should tell you. That right there. How about you add this too? We're talking about somebody who did it without the internet. Yeah. Who had to on. actually sell physical copies and Come singles on. and physical copies. On, Somebody bro. who had to actually get out here yeah. and do yeah. the kind of runs that people don't do anymore. Yeah. Not that we trying to disc not that I'm trying to discredit Kanye because I'm I'm a Kanye I'm fan a Kanye as fan well. Too, yeah. But I think some of these arguments are like they're like they have like revisionist bias yeah. already embedded in some. Yeah. So like for instance, like of course somebody who's in their twenty twenty five is gonna be like or not twenty, but like twenty, twenty five, thirty may make an argument for for LeBron over over MJ. Right. Well, you wasn't really here, here to, to see like that. MJ in his full. But yeah. somebody twenty twenty five is gonna be like, nah, John Morant like is better than Allen Iverson ever yeah, was, and it's yeah, like, it's bro, like, no, bro, you know he wasn't. So that's part yeah. of the the conversation with yeah. hip hop. But I yeah. think at the same time, it's like, no, just look at just those two facts. Yeah. We're comparing him to somebody who's been gone. gone. For 28 years. 28 years. Come on, bro. His murder was just found. Come on, bro. Or not just found, but the most the, the yeah. worst, worst, the worst kept secret ever. Yeah, worst kept secret. Yeah. Um, allegedly. Allegedly. Let me put that yeah. out there. But yeah. we're talking about somebody who made an impact in such a small window of time yes. after he got out of jail. Yeah, bro. Insane. So that says more about him than it does about. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's amazing. Like, come on, bro. He has seven movies. <laughs> Before he was 25. Before he was 25. Insane. And then I remember being a kid thinking Tupac was so much older. 
I did too. And now when I look back at it, like, bro, 25 is a baby. Young, like, that's bro. young. You that's... stopped my career at 25. There's so much that oh, I'm bro. like, I have no idea what's on the other side. Like, I don't, bro. It used to be a time where 30 was like, that's, you're starting to, the optics were at least that you're starting yeah. to become the beginning of the end of your career. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This whole 40 yeah. year old, 40 plus year old rapper thing, as mm-hmm. much as we champion it, that wasn't a very agreed upon. You still see fight back on that right now. Yeah, for sure. But this whole thing was like, oh, when you get to there, like that's the beginning. Like, you need to already be established by that time. Mm-hmm. But everything keeps shifting. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm telling you, the success out here, DIYers, is mm-hmm. for those who have the audacity to stick around. Yeah. As much as I can say it is talent, mm-hmm. it is talent. It is very much important. As mm-hmm. much as I can say it is, you know, getting the right looks. But mm-hmm. I'm telling you, longevity, longevity. That's why I say it's such a bar what you mm-hmm. said, bro. You had, you messed me up with that one. But you said when you can't do numbers. You, you said when I couldn't do numbers, I just stay consistent. Yeah. Because that's one thing that you have control over all the time. Yeah. And then one, if, if this one don't go, this one might. If these two don't go, mm-hmm. this one might. I just keep thinking like one of them gonna one fucking of them gonna go. have to because they ain't gonna yeah. they ain't got no choice. I'm gonna yeah. keep I'm gonna keep banging on this door and at yeah. some point somebody gonna answer this door. Somebody gonna answer or it's gonna crack. Yeah, I seen a video today of mm-hmm. a bear that uh they said mm-hmm. what would you do in a situation? A bear was uh, came up to a cabin and all you see is like the door shake for a second and then that last paw boom the door just breaks open and the bear <laughs> just walk in like this. Yeah, what's happening? I feel like that's what that's what our careers become to where it's yeah. like we knock one door to knock another one down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of look at the room Mm -hmm. and then move to the next thing. Move to the next door. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was episode one of the Really Indie Though. Really Indie Though. That's a tag. Hold on, hold on. You said what now? Really Indie Though. That's going to end up on the soundboard. That's going to end up on the soundboard for sure. Yeah. Look. We didn't come to lie to you. We didn't come to play with you. We didn't come to waste your time here on this Sunday. I I, I genuinely appreciate everybody here. Uh, we will be back probably in a few weeks, depending yep. on what this man's schedule is looking like. Don't yep. forget, as much as you get content from us, mm-hmm. uh, don't forget, you're still talking to folks who are actively, especially Triz. I got to catch up. He, Triz has is, is been active, active <laughs> out here. But uh, I love being around folks like yourself because it reminds me of like the necessity of to continue to build the catalog continue mm-hmm. to put this stuff out there but uh yeah i'm sure by the next time we link up it's gonna be a whole oh, lot yeah. more nonsense <laughs> to talk about much let the love. news catch up let come the news on catch up. the news ain't gonna never stop news man hell yeah so there it is ladies and gentlemen that was episode one of triz and curtis king really indie though podcast it will be yeah. on all your major distributors just give me a little second to put this thing together but uh, yeah, and shout out to uh, the powers that be to try to stop this string halfway <laughs> through. You can't stop that. This information is out there, and it, people yeah. are ready for it. Shout out to all the DIYers. DIY. Yeah. There it is. Have a go.